All right. We are live and ready. Um, have you... Did you get a chance over the last week or so to think about Bionic Commando Elite Forces for the Game Boy Color? Well, I certainly had the chance to. I wouldn't deny <laughs> that. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, like I say, I, I've... Uh, it's one of these ones I kind of did think about um, trying out if and when it was going to come to Virtual Console. Then, mm -hmm. as I, I've mentioned before, so I played the black and white Virtual Console by the Commando with the redrawn graphics and all that, mm -hmm. and I really quite like that. So in some ways, that kind of took the sting out of it a little bit for me because it's like, well, you know, I've played uh, an old-timey Game Boy version of this game. Because, of course, the, the NES Bionic Commando, or even the Famicom version of it, like, just never gets re-released, uh, you know, so I guess that Game Boy version is probably about as, as yeah. close to it as, as you get. I mean, they didn't, re -release. they probably didn't put it on the Wii Virtual Console because they were trying to sell the remakes. That's true, yeah, at the time, it was kind well, of... Well, remakes, in yeah, air quotes. Re reimagining or whatever the, the <laughs> Tim Burton word for that, or whatever, yeah, but, uh... Yeah, so, I mean, I, I, as a result, even though I have interest, I've not yet gone back to it and all that, so I can't really say, but the the kind of, it's a tip, right? Uh, I, I think that developed this, uh, I want to, um, uh, in one of their kind of early, early uh, kind of contributions, is it? Uh, you cut out, so I don't know what team you said. Oh, NST. I, I, oh, I believe this is NST, yes. Yeah, I think it's one of their early contributions. Uh, we, I, we'll cover a few more of their games in this time span, presumably. But yes. uh, I think I'll go with the six on this one, just because the, the, I do feel like when you've got the whole... Um, you know, the whole point is the sort of swinging mechanics and all that. It just seems like, you know, kind of judging and all that and kind of executing all that with the the cramped screen dimensions just doesn't seem as, as effective as uh, it would have been. So. And that's but, fair. Uh, I can't really go on much more than that. Wario Land 3. Yeah, so played this... Uh, I actually did get a cartridge of this uh, a few years into owning a Game Boy Advance and I mm. kind of played it that way. Um, I don't think I like played it super thoroughly on that go through I, I picked it up again on virtual console and kind of did like um, made, certainly did a lot more of it at that point but it was it was so kind of well thought of that mm -hmm. it was one of those that i felt you know i should i should go back and get a car there was a few of those like um you know being late late coming late to the game boy family uh you know dk94 and and Wayland Three were definitely two of the ones I really wanted, yep. and uh, it, it's it's kind of even more ambitious than the second one. I think we touched on this talking about the second one. Is as it, it feels more like it's getting towards a, a Metroid kind of template rather than just a level by level platformer type of template, and like mm -hmm. day night cycles and all this kind of stuff. And and there's kind of good and bad with that. I feel like like some of the stuff, um, you know, probably doesn't sit that comfortably with with some of the other you know the pre-existing elements of just like a, a typical kind of platformer and then there's still some like frustrations and probably a little bit more because it's not as novel anymore with the whole like oh you can't die but you know you can be inconvenienced mm -hmm. very much like dying when yes you, when you play a boss and all that kind of stuff so i think um an eight for me uh, on this one, but uh, it's, it is a really, really strong handheld game, and, uh, and I, I certainly appreciate its kind of uh, ambition, uh, even more probably than an 8. Okay. Um, so, the Donkey Kong Land games are done, which, mm. as a refresher, were inspired by, and they, you know, they, they, they strived to be um larger game like the the snes games now we have the color which means that they're going to try to port these things directly yeah and that's the thing it's like i think that obviously we talked about this the color would help from the point of view of just distinguishing it a bit more because this sort of you know detail um when you're trying to adapt the relatively detailed graphics of dkc mm -hmm. down 
not just heavily in resolution, but also into grayscale. I can only imagine, especially on those original model screens, it just kind of all smushed together into something not terribly, uh, you know, kind of uh, comprehensible. But uh, with with color, at least you've got something in your favor. Uh, but you know, I don't think enough to really say like you should just port DKC, you know, because the resolution cut is as steep as ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, sure uh, is. And as we talked about before, like DKC kind of felt a bit cramped on Super Nintendo, mm-hmm. uh, so I can only imagine this is really kind of uh, problematic. So this is sense. probably the the worst trilogy of iterations of DKC. <laughs> because it's trying to be the most faithful but can't pull it off no and I, I don't see how you ever really other than just oh we have color now which is is you know like i said kind of i think probably quite a, a significant yes there's a problem. screenshot that gx just dropped in the chat if you want to look at what this thing looks like <laughs> which is to say uh, maybe it looks like dk spent too much time in the hot tub or something <laughs> yes it maybe looks like um yeah does not look ideal for no, it, i would say in some ways it, it's weirdly kind of you know it's just uh, it, look the whole dkc paradigm when it came to graphics was just doing a sort of low res gif yes of, computer modeling so it's like what if it was a lower res one uh-huh. <laughs> it's always it is scalable but yeah i think i'm gonna go with the four on this it just it just it's a, it's such a it's a cash grab and it's just kind of you know ill-judged mm-hmm. but, um all right taking a pause to look at our chart because as a reminder uh i have this automated so that it is pulling the averages of every single year and creating a big fancy chart. It is also nice to look at a chart that isn't COVID related. It's true. That Um, is what I've been doing for the the, the, nearly two years now. Yes. Um, Yeah, the the plummet, like the the plummet is for years that have sheets, but you haven't given a rating to. Um, But it looks like this is 2000 by virtue of having relatively few games and having a bunch of eights and a nine is actually your second highest after yeah. 1994. Yeah, it's, it kind of uh, makes some sense in terms of it's not uh, diluted by some of the, the years where it's like we've got some, you know, like they're just trotting out a bunch of product for something. It's one of the relative virtues of it being kind of quiet, I guess. But uh, yes, yeah, we'll, um, we'll see how it goes from here. Yes, I have also tacked on 2021, which no one else had to rank because we are not going to be able to finish this thing before the end of 2021. So it's, it's, fair. it's fair. Get ready for your retrospective on Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl. <laughs> yes. uh, those classic games. Because I'm looking forward to ranking the, the Big Brain Academy or whatever that isn't even out yet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, all right. Moving on to 2001. You know, the GameCube year. Yeah, yeah. Well. Uh, not a GameCube year in Europe, but mm-hmm. uh, it is a GBA year. It is a GBA uh, year. They at least lost half of the consoles. And that was a big deal in terms of my relationship, as we touched on before. My yes. relationship with NOE starts to actually match up a little bit because, as I said, had, had any of the handheld uh, iterations before then, but... With this, it's like, okay, well, look, I'll just get... I was tempted to input stuff I was reading. You know, like Planet GameCube had you know, reviews of the the uh, the um, you know, launch titles in Japan, which was like four months before, yep. I think. But the thing, the thing that made it easy to kind of wait for the European release was just that I think it was pretty much at the same time as the NOA release. Yep. So, you know, it wasn't that. And four months after Japan was pretty tight back then I, I, you know, back oh then, yeah I say. Um, and of course you didn't have any pal you know because it's hand elves and yep. screen there's no pal stuff and and so this is where i start at least to get back to you know kind of being pl- more plugged in to what they're up to but of course you could it was region free 
So very often I was buying games from other regions because it was sooner or you know, because yep. it was exclusive and, and so forth. Um, and the thing that we'll get to less in the 2001-2002 era, more in 2004 on, um, you're getting a lot of... It is extremely inconsistent if this game is going to come out at the same time as the rest of the world, Europe before America, or way the hell after everyone else gets it. <laughs> like, it just... Um, because, la like, last night I went in and made the sheets for 04 to 08. Like, holy shit, some of these release dates are wild. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a... It's this sort of... It's the real transition phase from where we've been, which is like, it's just way the fuck behind everything, but you know, uh, to yep. where we are now, where things are ba you know, pretty pretty much uh, synchronous, uh, where it's like, okay, we're going to start like publishing some things that anyway don't, yep. but also we, we, we might get some things ahead of them, but, also, but you, other things where it's like, okay, that's going to be several months. Uh, it's that, you know, so it's... Yes all over the place all right going into 2001 kirby 64 the crystal shards yeah they did as we've said many times late coming to kirby and this one i took a while to get around to having you know, sort of started off with stuff like kirby's adventure superstar dreamland 2 eventually got around to this uh on wii u virtual console mm. and i quite like it i quite like it it's it's um you know, maybe, I don't know whether it sort of feels as kind of good as something like Kirby's Adventure, because it, probably by virtue of it being polygonal and stuff, it, it, it doesn't feel quite as crisp, like it's a little bit slower and stuff, uh, for being a kind of polygonal side-scroller, uh, you know, of this vintage, that's not uncommon. But, um, you know, the power mixing and the presentation and all that, it's all pretty solid stuff. I'd go with a seven. Okay. Excite Bike 64. On yeah, to the games that don't get re-released. Yeah, it, it did come out on Wii U Virtual Console. Um, I don't think mm -hmm. it did on Wii, which is odd, isn't it? But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I, come around, I, I came around on this eventually, but I, I didn't have it at the time. Really kind of a victim of, of still you know, importing expensive cartridge games, which is another important change once we get to 2001, because even though I did import my GameCube, the cut, the sort of the, the sort of uh, intersection of a few things like um, just online uh, import options really opening up and getting more competitive. The fact that GameCube games were cheaper yes. to import uh, because they you know, they were discs, and also some of the exchange rate factors at the time. Like mm -hmm. importing, I was still importing console games up to Wii. But it became a very different. It was much less of a like, oh god. I, I, I was getting older, uh, you know, so it, it, you know, I had more freedom to buy more. So it, it was. It, it, we'll get less of this as we go on. But with Excite Bike, it was like, oh, it reviews well, looks cool. No. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that's the that was one of those. But I did come round to it uh, on Wii U Virtual Console. I, in fact, before that, I had a cartridge. Um, a, it was just a, a bug, a Japanese one. It was very cheap. So I had it that way and played around with it a bit, but it was you know in a phase where I still had my N64 hooked up, but it wasn't something you'd go to that often. So the Wii U release I played more, and I liked what I played of it. So uh, I think another seven. Okay. Um, Nintendo's own StarCraft 64. Mm, so this is yeah, this is a weird one. I guess it's part another part of uh, some of the more kind of. Uh, PC kind of Western facing uh, mm -hmm. things with the N64. Although like, this feels feels a bit late for that, you know what I mean? Like, it feels like it was more of a thing in the earlier phases of the um, of the the console's life and all that. But uh, yeah, no, re no real sort of basis for to to speak about this. I've been not, not played much in the genre or anything from that particular series and certainly you know how well it came across to n64 so you know it's <laughs> i have really got very little to go on with this one mm, yeah i mean it's it is popular pc game rts on a controller that works fine 
but it's also never going to be the definitive way to experience. And mm. it doesn't get re-released, of course. Yeah, yeah, it seems kind of... Uh... Try to get a Western publisher to release their games on virtual console. Yeah, when it's a kind of version that, you know, the sort of, the need for it is sort of obviated, isn't it? Because yes. it's like, well, you, you, the whole point, you're bringing it to a kind of group of players at that time, you know, that just interacted with their games on a console rather than PC. But, you know, that's... that's exactly. You know, it doesn't really matter anymore. It's more of a historical curiosity looking back now. Yeah, so I think a five, but like I said, it's very much of a place of okay. ignorance. Paper Mario. Yeah, so very, very late, this one, um, wasn't it? I mean, uh, in terms of, I think it took a bit of extra time. I mean, it was a late N64 game in general, but it took extra time to come to Europe, presumably, yes. because it's yeah, quite wordy uh, for you know something with Mario in the title, especially. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I, I did get around to play this at the time. I kind of, kind of um, had a... If I had the near miss with Super Mario RPG, where like we we had it, we literally had it, and it would not work with our US converter on mm-hmm. Super Famicom because it didn't have the because it was a latter cartridge. It had um, some of the fancy like the FX chip games on Super Famicom had the three connectors on the mm. bottom. Mm-hmm. And the converter, it had room for those, but it didn't actually, the two outer ones didn't actually work. Like, it didn't actually have the connectors uh, to, to make those work. So, yeah, we, we ended up sending it back and, and, and said, well, Ed, Ed 64 is just around the corner. Let's just leave it. And then, so had I actually played that, maybe I would have played Paper Mario at the time as well. But I didn't. I played it on Virtual Console and really, really quite enjoyed it. Looking forward to it showing up on the expansion. Portable part. Paper Mario. Very excited about that one. Yeah, because I, I, uh, that was the one thing, I suppose, is that, you know, it did take me quite a while to get through it, even though, obviously, like, by RPG standards, it's not the most epic thing in the world. Oh, yeah, it's like 25. Yeah. With Virtual Console on Wii, I just played it in front of the TV. It took kind of a while. I think it's going to benefit from Expansion Pack, but uh, I'll go with an 8 on this one. Okay. Pokemon Puzzle League. How many yeah. different ways can we surface Pound Upon in the Pound West? Upon, yeah, I do like Pound Upon. I mean, with this one, uh, it's not a particular version I've played. I guess basically this shows up on the Japanese... Um, exclusive puzzle collection on GameCube but with Paneled Upon back, you know, as, yes. as the original Paneled Upon kind of uh, skin. And then this showed up on the Wii Virtual Console in America. I don't know if it did in Europe. Yeah, it might have done. I, f- I forget now, but yeah, again, it, it, it is something that's, that's better suited to, to portable play, of course, but, uh, but everything I can remember about the coverage at the time suggested, you know, it was a pretty uh, effective sort of... Uh, version of the game um so i think uh, and i do like panel the in general so even though i've not played it i think a seven for that okay banjo tui did play this one and very much enjoyed uh i think it was i won by the time i played it even though it came out in 2000 in the u.s i want to say i think that's right i think it was a 2000 game in the u.s but i played i did get round to i think it's just because i had other games uh, you know, Majora's Mask and uh, prob- and Sin of Punishment and stuff, so Banjo had to wait. Uh, you know, and, but uh, obviously there was a whole lot going on in the, in, in the rest of I won uh, in some way, so I did get around to it that year. Um, and, you know, it's there's, and I did, this is what I actually played, of the two I played more of this on Rare Replay. Mm. Um, yeah, I played so uh, I think I uh, played I think I saw the end of it on Rare Replay, the last, but not like all, everything, but you know, just like fighting the last boss. I forget how much you, because like with the original Badger, I think you almost had to have everything to beat the last boss. You, you, there wasn't, a, it wasn't like Mario 64. It was like 70 out of 120. It was, it was quite high the threshold to actually get there. I'm not so sure if it was quite as as high in Tui. So. Uh, but you know, I play I played it uh, more recently, so I feel a little bit more sort of on uh, steady ground when it comes to assessing it. Um, it's 
you know, obviously it's trying to sort of be bigger, better, badder than the original. Uh, the worlds are really big. Uh, and it's red. trying to be a little less excess than DK64. Yeah, I would definitely say that. It's not, it, it's it's definitely like, especially with the worlds and stuff, and especially if you track it back to like Mario 64's levels, I mean, they are so much bigger than something like that, you know, they're supposed to be four years later and all that, it's, it's fair enough, but, uh, you know, it's, it's going for scale and uh, and it's going for, you know, more kind of complexity, you know, got like, oh, Banjo and Kazooie can split up sometimes and they've got more unique moves and there's more bosses and, you know, it's just kind of more everything, like really, just kind of add, 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 there's uh, multiplayer, which I yep. never really bothered with, but it's there and it's probably decent, I mean, most of Rare's multiplayer games in those days were usually pretty fun if you bothered with them, even if uh, you know, they weren't necessarily the focus. Like um, I remember having quite a bit of fun with Conker's multiplayer around a friend's house, like even though it, you know, it was not like the focus of the game, presumably. But with this, it's it's just I think it was a bit too. There's 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 some things about the ambition that work, like uh, I like the way that some of the levels kind of interconnect with each other mm -hmm. uh, so obviously you've got the hub you know the typical like peach's castle thing where you've got a hub and then you go into worlds from that but in this case like you know oh there's a train and it'll like pull from i think it might be multiple worlds like it starts in one world but once you get the train working again it can pull into like this particular world that particular world i like some of that stuff the other stuff i like less is just there's a bit bit of that not to the same extent as DK64, but it is some of that bloat of just like, okay, yep. or even more stuff to collect under more specific circumstances and over a bigger space. And, you know, so it doesn't all work. Um, so, uh, and I guess it just, uh, maybe some of it is just playing it years later, but uh, it didn't quite kind of, um, it, it did quite captivate the way it had, the, the first banjo had, but uh, I'd, I'd say probably between a six and a seven, uh, I'll go with a six. Okay. Mario Party 3. So the first one hurt people. The second one fixed that. This is the first Mario Party that's another Mario Party. Yeah, I guess they really just went on a run game through to GameCube after this, like four, five, six, like they just came out really one after the other and oh kind of yeah the strain to come up with something we got the microphone at some point i remember that I, oh I yeah we'll get there i didn't really play any of these apart from like the odd time when as i mentioned before like a friend had a gamecube and some some party games that i didn't own but yeah hard to hard to judge this very much but uh, as a sort of annualization of a formula uh, let's go with a six on that pokemon stadium 2 so this has all of the Pokemon from the uh, Red and Blue and from Gold and Silver, which, surprise, those are the next games to, yep. that we're going to rank. So this is 251 Pokemon. No, which, you know, I guess, uh, from that, that first Japan-only game, anyway, we've come, certainly come a long way. Yes. Uh, it's like 200 <laughs> like, more Pokemon than that. Than that. Uh, and it had, like, uh, you know, mini games and stuff on the top. And I, I remember, couldn't you, like, play, like, do a Game Boy Player type thing before Game Boy Player, obviously, or, but, or after Super Game Boy? Yes. The transfer pack thing, like, you could... Yep. Uh, put that in there and play it that way and all that so it was you know, a little bit more than just like an extra visualizer for you know your pokemon battles uh, uh, on the big screen um so i think uh, a, a six for that one as well okay pokemon gold and silver mm, yeah what's your experience with these didn't again did not play them originally it was definitely one of the things it was definitely one of the biggest candidates i talked about going back and getting some game boy pre-gba games when i had a gba this was definitely one of them that i was under serious consideration but the thing is is there was always new pokemon games coming out so it was kind of like well do i go back or do i wait for the new one and then i didn't end up getting a pokemon game um uh, for myself until uh, diamond and pearl 
on DS, so it was it was years later in the end. But um, I did I played the remakes of these also on DS, mm-hmm. uh, Soul Silver, um, and it certainly is uh, based on everything I've read and just played that remake. I mean, it's it's one of the kind of most uh, well liked you know Pokemon games. The way it kind of manages to incorporate so much from the original game on top of a sort of new campaign as well. Oh yeah. A lot of the designs have kind of, I think, have, have remained popular, you know, have kind mm-hmm. of, uh, even though they're not. There is, of course, like such a you know, complete kind of focus on the original 151 that kind of endures to this day, but a lot of the gold silver designs is what have endured, and yep. it seems to me as well. So I think nine is appropriate for this one. Okay. Uh, Pokemon Puzzle Challenge mm. for the Game Boy Color. So, is this Puzzle League or is it yes. different? Okay, it is Puzzle League because I, I knew they did it on on GBC as that. So yeah, it seems seems uh, a pre- I mean, I guess you know, what you're losing in sort of resolution and multiplayer options, you're gaining in, in portability. portability. So yep. it's it's pre- I think Seven is probably you know, balances it out back there again. All right. What about the Little Mermaid 2 Pinball Frenzy, which I have a note that says, LOL, you thought you'd get GameCube. Here's the Little Mermaid 2 Pinball Frenzy from your friends at NOE. Wow. I mean, that is, uh, I guess it's in the sort of um, lineage of the Beauty and the Beast. (laughs) Board game. (laughs) Because it's it's kind of uh, where we were, was it? We were like, okay, well, let's, yeah turn a disney thing it's a board game a pinball game yeah i, I like pinball but uh i um, don't know what to say about this so there's a screenshot that uh chex has posted in the chat which is a lot to unpack <laughs> um i would also uh remind you that this is not the little mermaids the movie in theaters this is the direct to vhs sequel Yes, I wasn't a Disney person as we've covered, uh, you know, uh, before. But I was, I was, yeah. You know, I, I even I could recognise that pattern of like we'd have the theatrical release of things like Aladdin and the Little Mermaid or whatever, and then we had the the straight to home video. Oh which, yeah, yeah, that would come afterwards, you know. So I, I don't know, I mean, there was yeah, many many things like that in those days, I guess. Uh, so, I'm going to go with a five. I just haven't got much else to go on. I'll, I won't go lower just because it's pinball. But... <laughs> yeah, what about Alice in Wonderland for the Game Boy Color? <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> now, uh, this <laughs> makes a fatal error of not telling me exactly what kind of game it is. Oh, time. yeah, Beauty and the Beast said a board game adventure. Yeah, P- that's Little pinball. Mermaid 2 with Pinball Frenzy. This is just fun. Alice in Wonderland. So ooh, yeah. you gotta go Google. I am doing it. Uh, so what do we got here? It's we will have to. <laughs> have to have <laughs> okay. Yes, I'm seeing character portraits. Oh my god, it's so <laughs> zoomed in. Oh dear me. Yeah, I mean it's the animation's nice. You know, you could see there's a lot of frames in those animations there. You can see that they're putting in the effort to try and you know kind of give it a feeling of some level of animation quality that it's matching but the result seemingly is just super zoomed in and i've we've talked about that plenty of times so let's get to the four okay mario tennis game boy color out of the disney zone yeah yeah again not not there at the time but uh, something i've played a bit on virtual console played more of the gba version which is obviously you know very heavily based on it uh, oh we yeah did a, we did a retroactive for that on the uh, rfn um very very good i won't give it a 10 uh although <laughs> no, that was the gba version that, that was the gba version they got, got the 10 got all that shit for but because uh, yeah, but because uh, how dare somebody give a portable sports game a good score i mean that's just clearly uh, uh, transgressive, uh, you know, isn't it? it, it yes. It's kept, oh, damn near bloody iconoclastic or something, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I think um, an 8 is, is fair for the GBC game. Okay. 
Pokemon Crystal, which in Europe released the same fucking year as Gold and Silver. Uh, yeah, I guess this is the thing, isn't it? Because when you... This was always bound to happen, because when you are uh, running a year behind the... And American, you're launching new hardware. And you, it's just kind of like, okay, at some point, we're going to want to sort of catch that year up to some extent, especially as time goes on and everything just gets more global with the internet uh, and everything. So, yeah, at some point, this something like this was going to have to happen, so that's kind of unfortunate, but uh, it, it, you know, it could still have the nine, I think. But it, Okay. It's not gold and silver. You can play as a girl in this one. That's the number one change. Right. Um, of, of the... All of the, like, third editions or, like, sequel games or, like, remixes that the series is want to do. This is the least. But, you know, I liked it at the time. Uh, also, because there was a whole year between it and Gold and Silver in, in America. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of important, especially in the lives of young people. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh-huh. Um, all right. The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages. Yeah, this was uh, something I got for my GBA as a physical cartridge, Ages. I, think I went with Ages over Seasons. Not necessarily thinking like I would only get it, but I got it first, and, it, and in fact, <clears throat> it did end up being only that one. Uh, based on the fact that it was more, you know, the, the, this is the one that's more about puzzles, you know, and it's got the... With the seasons, you've got four different seasons. With the time travel stuff, it's more explicitly linked to the past in that you know, yes. the dark world, light world, but just a lot of you know, future and past kind of thing. And I that that appealed to me, so I played it, and uh, I did I did like it quite a lot. Obviously, it runs into some of the problems uh, just still left over from Link's Awakening in terms of uh, you know, the, the limited number of buttons for a you know, really quite sophisticated game. Um, so it could kind of get fiddly switching everything around. But uh, there, there's there's a lot to like there. I think an eight is, okay. is fair with. Any gut feeling for Seasons? So I did play Seasons uh, later on Virtual Console to the end. Mm -hmm. And what it allowed me to do, of course, even though one was on cartridge and one was on Virtual Console, is I used the like passwords or whatever to do the real ending. You know, the, the, the many years mm. after I'd originally played the first half, I played the second half, and then and then put the you know, the real last boss and all that. So that was that was cool. The fact that that was something that could carry over in that way. Uh, back in those days um so i mean it's it is a, as as puzzle oriented i guess and, and uh, you know that's uh, something i do a, a, an element of the zelda games i really really like but it's still really quite good uh so i mean probably maybe more like a seven and a half like just very slightly mm -hmm. but uh yeah we'll go with the seven okay pocket soccer Ah, oh, pocket soccer. So I'm gonna have to investigate the pedigree of this, or if it's just like completely no particular pedigree. But I mean, mm -hmm. we're yeah, still in GBC so... land, so yeah, yeah. Let's see, pocket soccer for Game Boy, inspiring box art. I've got to say, <laughs> a ball in the back of the net. I mean, that's just what it's all about. I mean, I'm not even really being facetious there, but equally, yeah. It's remarkably boring to look at. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it's tough again. Represent doing kind of uh, this kind of um, game on Game Boy Color because of the, the resolution doesn't really. Of and, course. And the, and the issues involved with uh, doing effective multiplayer as well. It's not the easiest, but uh, I think. Um, I'm going to have to mostly go, just go with a five out of uh, not being able to say much more about it. Okay. And the GBC version of Mickey's Speedway USA. Right, yeah. Well, we talked about this, didn't we? The pattern of you know, seemingly much more so than kind of other Nintendo games, this kind of junior version that Rare games got on, on Game Boy, like Clockwork. Uh, sometimes, you know, not particularly good fits. Uh, Mickey Speedway with a racing game like this on, on these sorts of things. I mean, it could be done, I guess, but it, it doesn't seem like a great fit. Uh, I have to be another five, though, out of, uh, you know, not knowing too much about it. 
Okay, we are on to GBA F Zero Maximum Velocity. Yeah, and the game I picked up the European release of on Lord's Day, so it's like we're really in the uh, hell really yeah some, some actual synchronicity here. So yeah, that that my GBA Lord's Day right around my birthday in you know, one uh, was uh, the the GBA itself and the, the the sort of transparent blue, but that kind of mostly looked purple most of the time. But yeah. I think, glacier or whatever like it was it was uh meant to be blue but most of the time in most lights it looked kind of purple but uh then maximum velocity and castlevania that, those were my oh thoughts. good a game you could see in the game you couldn't for the true experience yeah I mean, i've talked many times about the you know feeling like i was in some old police procedural getting sweated for information but i was playing castlevania that's, that's that's what it was, but yeah, with ma maximum velocity, obviously it was really nice to see another F Zero game. It had you know, been ten years since I played, uh, first played you know the original F Zero, and it only had F Zero X in between, which uh, I really really liked. But it was also like quite different, whereas this is kind of like you know one of the many games, not just from Nintendo but other publishers too. With GBA, it was like, okay, yeah, basically, you know, Super Nintendo era's back, baby. Let's, mm -hmm. let's do this. Um, and one of the things that's cool about Maximum Velocity visually is that it has essentially like parallax for Mode 7. Mm -hmm. So you've got multiple layers moving around. So it, it does, it really does augment the effect, I think, because, you know, it does, it does kind of feel a bit less like, you know, you're just on like a giant like kind of board from a board game that someone's rotating when you've got two layers to it it just it just it does add to something um i, I always would have liked i don't i mean probably something like this exists but i just did, did never played it but like if somebody did a 3ds game that had like parallax mode 7 and you could actually separate the layers with stereoscopic 3d i think it would have looked neat but uh you know the sega 3d classics are probably the, the closest thing you get to things like that but gameplay wise it wasn't all roses the the ha first of all like the carrot the crafts i should say you know the, the, they were pre-rendered looking not that like I, I don't know I, I don't know whether it's so much that, that they were pre-rendered or just that they maybe the designs i didn't like as much as some of the other ones but they did look so great it kind of looked like i don't know the kind of thing if you did like a fan game or a hack of f-zero you know what mm -hmm. i mean it just, it's like the tracks and everything kind of look like authentic f-zero and then the cars look like some sort of imitator but then more importantly that the way the cars handle and all that they just sort of went for this it was very much like the original f0 in a lot of ways but you had this thing where you, to, to take sharp turns effectively you had to like really kind of feather the i think it was feathering the accelerator so you were kind of letting off the gas like but really fast was the only really effective way to get and it, you know you could master that but it's just not that much fun you know? yeah well but, 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 you know like with especially more advanced tracks just really hammering those buttons uh so yeah i just i'm not entirely sure what the you know how much that was even intended or if it was intended why they thought that was better than the way f-zero used to be but otherwise it was a pretty good uh you know recreation of, of you know, the, the super nintendo style of f-zero uh, and and cool to play on a portable so i think seven okay kuru 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 in didn't have this at the time but it did review well it was something i was kind of interested in played it on virtual console i like it quite a lot and i also then went on to get the um kuru in squash for gamecube mm -hmm. uh, a, a japan exclusive that I quite like as well. Uh, yeah, great portable game kind of stuff. This, you know, in, in terms of uh, something that uh, just fits with the, being able to kind of have a, a, a little challenge to go through, uh, and kind of addictive, and it just when you know, you could kind of the, the level designs are usually laid out well enough that you kind of you you would it was set up for you to screw up, but you would feel like you you know you, that was your you know kind of failure to properly anticipate something and you know just kind of get addictive and go back to it in that way. So I think an eight for this. Okay, 
Super Mario Advance 1. <laughs> yeah. Top of your head, what game is this? This is Super Mario Brothers 2. Uh, but yes. It, the the USA, you know, kind of Super Mario Brothers 2, not the Lost Levels or, or for Super Players. But, um, yeah, I didn't get this at the time. It just seemed like, you know, not one of the more compelling... Uh, I guess because I hadn't really played much of Super Mario Brothers 2 itself, at the, you know. So in some ways that you could have that could have made it more appealing to actually go back and play this game, but in other ways it, I, you know, I didn't have like nostalgia for it or anything. Yep. So I wasn't like, particularly uh, psyched to play it in that sense. So just some of the other stuff where it's like, oh, Castlevania is coming back, but it's an original game. F Zero is coming back, but it's an original game. It just felt more, you know, essential like those games. Um, I did play it eventually on Virtual Console because they did a. a I, I still probably wouldn't have got it even then, but there was a sale where I can't remember what it was. It's like if you got a couple of the Mario Advance games on Wii U, you got one for like extra cheap. Mm -hmm. And it was. So that was like the extra one, uh, basically. Because I wanted to play the Super Mario Advance version of. Mario World because I've never played it and because it like tracks the dragon coins and stuff you can actually like get them all which is something that the original just didn't do at all like they're there but just to get one ups whereas mm -hmm. actually tracking them kind of turns is, is more like kind of a, a prototype or a foreshadowing of what would happen with star coins in new Super Mario Brothers and then also uh, the Super Mario Bros. 4 version of Super Mario Bros. 3 because it had the e-reader stuff. And oh, all yeah. That sort of well, stuff. not in Europe. Uh, well, yeah, but uh, the, the Wii U version uh, had the... The Wii the, U version the... did, but when we get to Super Mario Advance 4, Super Mario Bros. 3, you got to remember, didn't, didn't have e-reader. No, so we won't be able to give it any points for that. But the the fact that the Wii U version did kind of makes up. Well, I want those two games, and if I have those two games, I get Super Mario Advance for cheap. So okay, I'll do it. I played it, and uh, I said I do like uh, Super Mario Brothers Two, and then I I played it more by that time. Uh, you know, through stuff like Super Mario All Stars and whatnot, and uh, you know, it, it, this is a, a mostly fine version I, you know, there's this things like the voice clips that people <laughs> don't like there's there's some extra stuff like some like yoshi challenges or something i think like, mm -hmm. like run through the game and whatnot so it's it's fine you know uh and and i do like the game i'll go with a six it's, okay. it's probably more of a six and a half but we'll go with six what about napoleon so i've heard about this uh it's tactical isn't it uh yes yeah, french it's, only but uh, so it is just it, but it, it was in Japan, I think. Right? Yes. yes. But then in terms of how it came over, I wouldn't have been able to tell you that it came over really anywhere other than Japan. But I guess they were like, yeah, France will want this. <laughs> <It's> interesting. <laughs> uh, Very interesting uh, logic there. But okay. I guess a mostly like country exclusive European releases so far have been German, haven't they? Because German yeah. or Australia. Yeah, you know, Australia obviously is its own very particular I've, place in the PAL. Exactly, world. and I've been skipping anything that's Australia exclusive. Yeah, but they, they had an Australian exclusive Animal Crossing, essentially. So it, was like on, it was in Australia way before uh, the rest of the PAL regions, I guess, because it was just like, well, this English only. So yes. you could do that. The, the UK would not get that sort of treatment you you know like where it's like oh it could just release in the uk like that is when it was you know across the the continent you know they, it, it was all uh, sort of joined together but yeah napoleon being france only is interesting but i don't know very much about the substance of the game other than it is a, a tactical game of some description yeah i don't know much either i'll be honest yeah uh, let's uh, go with a six. Okay. Mario Kart Super Circuit, everyone's favorite one. Yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting the kind of way this has gone. It reviewed very, very well at the time, uh, and kind of convinced me to get it. Like I said, I'd not owned a Mario Kart game before this. I'd played them, you know, uh, with with friends and stuff. Uh, 
multiplayer, you know, their copies and things like that. But, uh, you know, it was really the strength of the reviews that convinced me of like, because, you know, might not necessarily, but I did end up playing this multiplayer quite a bit because someone else I knew at school ended up having uh, a GBA as well and we could, you know, do link cable stuff. But I didn't necessarily know that kind of going in, but I still, so it was really the strength of the reviews and thinking like, oh, you know, there's a lot of content here. Uh, you know, the way it sort of did, the way it actually had, it was essentially the, wasn't it the first sort of, of the Mario Karts to have like all the retro tracks? <laughs> to, to like, It had a lot of tracks. It, it had more tracks than any of the, like either of the games before it. I think the catch here is just that people just generally don't think the game is very good. Yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's so you know all these things kind of convince me to to go with it, and I think uh, I mean think about you, uh, Konami's uh, you know Crazy Racing, uh, YY Racing, like that had released before this, but um, you know it's kind of like well I've had F Zero, I'm looking forward to Mario Kart, so I kind of passed on that and and held out for Mario Kart. And uh, like I said, I went with it. And because it was my first Mario Kart, like some of the weirdness that people look, you know, may have felt with it at the time or look back on it with now, it didn't really strike me. Like I, I just, I, I really, really quite liked it. And it was definitely something where, you know, it's less, it's less chaotic, I think, even than Mario Kart 64, but certainly some of the ones that came later so it's kind of felt a bit more like you know what like if you want to get like your three stars or whatever you know kind of ranking and finish first like it's just a case of like you master the tracks you keep an item to shield you and you don't get desperately unlucky like you can do it so it kind of appealed to me on that level it wasn't too crazy it wasn't like too cra so you know but i mean in retrospect i think it's, it, it, it feels like this weird halfway house between the polygonal games and Super Mario Kart. Yes. Like, it's not... It isn't... Like it's sort of like F-Zero Maximum Velocity. It's not a exact recreation of the way the Super Nintendo iteration felt and handled. And, of course, with the pre-rendered ca characters in this case, it feels very much like Mario's... You know, it looks... It has an aesthetic quality that's like Mario Kart 64. But, of course, it doesn't have... You know, undulating tracks and all that kind of stuff that the polygonal games had. So, yeah, it is an odd duck in retrospect, but it's one that I actually quite like. So I'm going to give it an 8. Okay. And then last for the year, Wario Land 4. Yeah, so my first Wario Land game, uh, I, I sort of went back to mm -hmm. 3 after playing this. Uh, and again, reviewed very, very well. People really seem to like it, and uh, yeah, I got it. And I guess, you know, probably took a little bit more getting used to some of the things in it for me than people who had played 2 and 3, which, of course, had come out, you know, really quite close. You know, 2, 3, 4, just in a matter of, what, three years or something? You know, so it, 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 yep. I assume for a lot of people who played them as they came out, you know, it was all quite fresh, relatively speaking. For me, I was just coming in kind of cold. But, you know, aesthetically, it was strong the bizarre kind of um, audio in the game, which is a little bit of a precursor to what WarioWare would do. Just these, like, samples and, yeah, weirdness. I mean, the GBA obviously wasn't the best fidelity, but it, it, it the sort of scratchiness and the compression. Uh, and that headphone jack on the first model was no, didn't do it any favours either. But it was way beyond the realms of like GBC games and stuff like that. Like you, you, they, you could do stuff kind of give a personality that they didn't have before much more. So, I mean, I don't think the music in Wary land two or three is that much of a strong point. There's some good stuff in there, but you know, it's, it just like it, it tries and fails to do, to bring some of the personality across your know, kind of that sort of, uh, the main theme with with the, some of those games like it kind of has this i hesitate to say farty kind of noise to mm -hmm. it but it, do, it does it's you know, it's going for something kind of farcical and it just comes across as a bit flat uh, but wary land 4 goes way beyond that so that's a big mark in its favor um the whole like coming back thing when you you know you could it, it basically have a dash back to the, the the beginning of the level 
after you've reached the end in every case and all that. I mean, it's I think it's executed better in Shake It because it's like kind of forces it to go faster uh, rather than you kind of manually doing it. So um, I wasn't in love with that idea at the time, but uh, I think it still works. Overall, an eight. Very strong. You know, they had some things, I think, uh, you know, kind of it dialing back some of the freedom and ambition of Wayland 3 work. Um, you know, and it's it's just a really good action platformer. Okay. In the end, very, very close to 1994, but not quite. Ah, we know 94 is still... Uh, yeah, old. we're at it's 6.76 to 6.75. Yes. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll get we'll, we'll top it by the end, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, 2002. Uh, fi we finally get GameCube. No N64. N64 is just behind us completely. Yeah. Um, yeah. None yeah. of this. What they usually like to do is, you know, wind down a console the same year they release another one. But by virtue of NOE going late on this one, there weren't any N64 games they wanted to put out. No, no, there was none of that, and I guess they were busy with the portable stuff anyway, so, you know, it kind of wasn't the biggest deal, yeah. but yeah, the, the GameCube launch for me, uh, it was, I had it late in uh, one, I uh, didn't get it as soon as the Japanese version came out, although a friend of mine did, surprised, it had initially said, but it was kind of like, eh, well, you know, the launch lineup, or uh, maybe, you know, and then when, when it came to it, he pretty much got it as soon as he could. And <laughs> so I got to play, like, Monkey Ball and Wave Race and a bunch of stuff ahead of time, um, you know, and I was you know, just really, really ready to go by the time I got my... Um, my, I was, it was a Japanese black model. Mm. I, just, I ended up going with the one that would fit with every... I guess, like, in, in the abstracts, I probably liked the orange one the most, but it wouldn't have gone with anything that I had in my, you know, home... Of course. Set, like, set up at the time. But, uh, yeah, that, that, that was me, and I had... Um, but Rogue Squadron and Melee were the two games that I actually got with it at you know at the same time as the system. But my friend who had imported it at that point had kind of moved on to other stuff. So it was like, here you go, you uh, you borrow Wave Race, you borrow Monkey Ball and stuff. And then a little bit after that, I got Pikmin and Luigi's Mansion. So this was just like so different from the import days of, of yore, even though I was still importing. It's just like I'm drowning in games here. <laughs> so it was very different. So I could actually speak about a lot of these. Excellent. Uh, you know. Well, maybe not all of these. Some of these are fucking weird. So <laughs> Luigi's Mansion. Yep, so I played this just, uh, you know, a little bit after I got, probably about a month after I got the system. Um, you know, I, I, I still like it to this day. I played through the 3DS version not that long ago. Obviously, it is very short, and, you know, it's based around being relatively good-looking and stuff. It's, it's, you know, it's relatively shallow, but, um, you know, fundamentally quite fun and it got a great personality and all that so it's six and a half ish but i'll go generous and give it seven okay wave race blue storm yeah uh i, I guess the thing the knock on this really at the time and it's completely fair really is just that it was so much just like a remake of wave race in terms of like the tracks and the track themes mm -hmm. were pretty much just all the same in terms of like okay is the the first track on the boardwalk and he is the you know with the beach and he is another the track with the lake and he is the track with the you know the more like the dock or whatever like it was they were really quite remakes just higher resolution you know better physics there was a turbo mechanic so it was all kind of yeah and i guess the other thing is the, the th one of the appeals of the impacts of wave row 64 was just you know, having r relatively convincing water physics in a home game like that was you know, much much less novel much less impact all these years later so it was prettier it, i did kind of like what the turbo thing brought to the mechanic brought to the table although it wasn't that much meaningful of a mechanic in the you know grand scheme of things uh, but yeah you would have liked to see it just do a few more things that weren't just kind of you know a hot essentially the 
equivalent in its day of a high definition remaster. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I think a six. Okay. Yeah, for, it's, it's, it, but it is, you know, it, it's it feels pretty solid. I'd like, I'd like to play it again at some point. Pikmin. Pikmin, yeah, really, really like this one. Uh, it's even though you can see in some ways it's got some of the same issues that Luigi's Mansion and a lot of GameCube games would have, where it's like, okay, guys, yeah, N64, all this faffing about, not releasing the games as quickly as we could, you know, cost us. So we, we've got to get stuff out the door. Um, you know, I think Pikmin, you can still see that a bit, but I think it hurts it the least of, of those, ge- you know, like some of those games, re- it really kind of compromised them. But I think in general, the limitations in Pikmin and the way it's crafted, it all holds together really quite well. And with Pikmin 2, which, uh, you know, obviously we get to eventually, while the way it expands on it is on the original is, is quite effective in some ways, there's a kind of, there's a bit of bloat to that as well you know so i think they got a lot right with the original pikmin uh so i think an eight for this yeah very 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 strong i didn't know whether i'd like it because i had no experience with strategy you know real-time strategy games or anything like that but when i eventually did get to it i i, I really uh took to it in a big way okay melee well i don't we've not had one of these in a while but this is a 10 this it, this for me is just uh well it was so much fun again i didn't have this uh, my friend who was in port against got this before me and just playing it i was oh my god i can't wait to have this i mean i just we loved smash brothers so much uh the on n64 but this was like oh like this is what smash brothers can be you know it looks so much better it sounds so much better the music all that orchestrate you know orchestral uh you know, kind of stuff uh, that they had in there. The you know, how much bigger the characters were, the stages be you know, so many more and more variety and stuff. It's just, it, the the much bro- broader sort of range of Nintendo references it could mm-hmm. make. The trophies, everything, uh, the way it played was just faster, tighter. Uh, the extra move that came in with this compared to you know to make everyone's move sets more kind of interesting. It was, at the time, just everything I could have wanted from a Smash Brothers sequel. And then it stood the test of time about as well as anything I could imagine. I mean, I played this regularly all the way, certainly up to Brawl, but then even, you know, kind of revisit, would revisit it periodically after Brawl. And, you know, people play it competitively to this day. I mean, it's, 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 it's just... Obviously, yes, it's not perfect by any means and and whatnot, but uh, it's it stood the test of time. It's the great, great stuff. Okay, yeah, that's the first ten since Donkey Kong ninety four. Yeah, it's uh, but it, it, it's it's you know, I I don't want to. I mean, maybe I probably could have been an argument for giving out a few more, but and so it's just how much I the absolute affection over a very long period of time I have yeah. for that game. But it's 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 I think it's worth it. Doshin the Giant. Okay, yeah. So <laughs> you know, I've heard a lot about this with uh, 64DD and you know reading import coverage and stuff, but it never really sounded like it quite. You know, it was more it, the ideas never really got fully realized in any particular version of this. Is that you know? Do yeah. you have any insight to that? Yeah, it's fine. It is impressive. Uh, technical showcase for um, like geo mesh transformation on N64. Here it is on GameCube. <laughs> yeah, and then, well, there was a few of those, uh, including you know a game that ended up being much more consequential in terms of late N64 games in Japan that just came over to GameCube, like Animal Crossing. Uh, oh <laughs> yes, ends up being this juggernaut, whereas <laughs> Toshi. Not not so much, but I, I mean, I, I, could, I, I, I could only go with a five on this one. I, yeah. I just don't know much else about it. I mean, this is the year that um, Animal Crossing comes out to GameCube in America. Get ready to f- keep an eye out for when you see that in Europe, because it's, it's going to be a while. Yeah, I, see, I don't think it was too bad in Australia, but everywhere else in, in PAL world... It, you ain't getting it in 2002, and spoiler, you ain't getting it in 03 either. Um... <laughs> 
Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem. Talk about a game yeah. that maybe has not held up. I played this mostly when we did retroactive on it, which itself was 12 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. In, in 09, yeah. So I, I still haven't played it in quite a long time, but I didn't have it at the time. It reviewed exceedingly well. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and um, you know, it, I did get to see it. Other pe people I knew had it. I got to see it. I got to see some of the fun, like, sanity effect stuff and all that because still even though like internet video was a thing by this point like it was not the sat like, it was oh, of just course. something that i would necessarily you'd read about it on the internet it wouldn't really be able to see especially like uh, my internet connection was still pretty crappy but uh, around this time but uh you know i played enough of it and, and sort of you know there was a level of intrigue but i just didn't i wasn't that sort of confident in my ability to enjoy survival horror-ish type stuff. I mean, obviously, it's not exactly like other games in the genre at the time, but I just that that's what kind of held me back from making the purchase. Kind of, well, I see, maybe I'll get it later, and then I didn't until we did the retroactive, and when I played it then, you could still see you know, some of the things that came across quite well, uh, you know, with the presentationally uh, on what they were going for, but um, also, again, this is another N64 game essentially, uh, you know, coming over to because it was shown mm -hmm. you know, quite a bit, wasn't it, in previews and uh, trade shows for N64 coming over to GameCube. It's not absolutely the most impressive because it wasn't built from the ground up, but there's still some of the presentational aspects that are pretty good. But gameplay wise, you know, there's there's some things that are kind of interesting. Uh, but other things that seem a bit wonky. I think a, a, I would go with the six at this point. Okay. Speaking of games that maybe don't hold up, Super Mario Sunshine. Oh yeah. Well, I get want to talk <laughs> about retroactives. I think this, this yeah, you want to talk about also things rushed to market. Oh yeah, and this is one of the biggest ones. That this really is one of the biggest ones. You you can feel it. I mean, you could just feel the lack of the usual. You know, the hitherto, you know, kind of assumed level of like, we're actually gonna rigorously play test this stuff. <laughs> we're gonna make the controls feel natural. Yeah, all that stuff that just, you know, the extra few passes or whatever, just, it just, yeah, even at the time, you could feel that. But equally, I really, really did enjoy it overall at the time. I mean, I, the, absolutely. It's just, uh, especially those, you know, more. Uh, kind of traditional like three but but in 3d kind of platforming sections it's just like oh yeah this is this is what i want 3d mario to be and it's even though it was only kind of a, a slice of those games of, of sunshine i should say it would go on in future games to be you know the, the galaxy is much you know is getting there and, and really kind of 3d land and world are mm -hmm. uh, you know that that's it like that's the dream come true it would only take like a decade <laughs> but it, it would happen but yeah and that's the thing in light when you look back on it as we did with the retroactive after 3d land 3d world have done it and done it right it's kind of like okay yeah it has some of that in there and it's not as good as it as certainly this, right? isn't and then it's more like well what does it have other than stuff that's been done better later and it's like you know <laughs> it has a lot of chores it does have a lot of chores it does have some of that bloat of just like a bunch of different like contingency collectibles i guess oh red coins and blue coins the blue coins the blue coins is kind of the worst because keeping track of all that stuff with the different versions of the level the different mm -hmm. stories i played it in japanese Oh no! Uh, I, I don't know whether it, it, it um, was it, like they called them stories. I think like, yes. In the Japanese version, when you selected which shine you were kind of going to get or whatever, and so all those things. Yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 really complicated. I've talked about this before because I just really, really liked it at the time, even though it certainly I was conscious of uh, quite a lot of the flaws even then, but certainly in retrospect. It's, uh, you know, one of these things that just has, and even like just relative to Mario 64, you know, like this, it, it's weird, it, it's, it's something that came later and yet it's in some ways it's aged worse 
you know so it, it, it's it, it quite an unusual thing to try and reconcile all these things i think i'll go with a six ultimately uh it, it's it's difficult for me to balance everything yeah it's a, make an argument based on how much i enjoyed it at the time how many Just dr pepper cans <laughs> yeah well i mean goodness knows if if i'd been drinking dr pepper at that time how much more i might have enjoyed it but... <laughs> It's, it's true. It's a case of I'll have what Johnny's having. I think. It's, yes. Uh, <laughs> but I, you know, if I'd reviewed it back then, I don't think it would have been that different from how Johnny saw it, to be honest. But yeah, uh, you could certainly, especially with just the great games they've made since. And maybe it's a little bit harsh to judge it in that way, but I can't help but do it. It's just like it's of course. so much of my positive feeling about the game in 02 was about you know what it, the sort of potential that it represented and it's like well they did it and they did it better so yeah I, i'll go with the six but it's it's there's, it's that's one of the most like complicated mm -hmm. like uh, collateralized debt obligation yes and, like sandwiches of feelings uh, we've we've given yet all right speaking of games that maybe were bad at the time and aged like milk Disney's Magical Mirror starring Mickey Mouse. Have you played this? I've heard about it, but... Uh, Fuck uh, this game. Past, but not, not really at all <laughs> seen it, so yeah, fill, fill me in a bit. Um, so it is an adventure game. <laughs> um, on the controller, it's point and click, but it's also a third-person action game. You have a Mickey Mouse hand cursor, I believe, or so, some cursor where you are guiding Mickey Mouse to where you want to go, except the AI is dumb as rocks and will frequently just not do what you want. So it's really, <laughs> you're just making vague suggestions of what you want to happen. <laughs> and um, the whole thing, if you... If Mickey Mouse listens to you, the game is like 45 minutes long. And if <laughs> in a normal playthrough, it's like six hours. <laughs> wow. because you're fighting the game the whole time it's just, it's just this game is a game that um so my i mean my story with this is that like okay got a gamecube in 02 in america obviously um alongside pikmin and animal crossing i think it was either animal crossing it right when i got it or like right after uh, so it was like mid to late 02 is when I got the GameCube and uh, Sunshine and it almost immediately did not like Sunshine. Um, but I'm thinking, well, what other GameCube games do I want? Well, wouldn't you know, in the U.S., participating McDonald's locations had Disney's Magical Mirror starring Mickey Mouse at PlayStation, like not PlayStation as in the Sony thing, but like the... The place where the small kids go play, like yeah, the playpen. Like the, right, and they had like units set up. Yes, for that. so they had a unit set up for Disney's Magical Mirror, and I played it for, and I just stood there, like jaw <laughs> open, as I tried to play this thing for like ten minutes, and then I was like, I have to come back to this, and so I think it's like in two thousand four, I end up getting a copy for like three dollars. <laughs> and I just sit, and I'm like, I have to know. You could imagine it being overproduced. Like that city yes. and then ended up really cheap. Like that makes very seems like pretty pretty much inevitable. Yeah. So. Yes. So my this game is like one of the first instances in my life of I saw a kusage, and I'm like, I have to have this. <laughs> this is trash. I don't know what happened here. If, like, they were making an adventure game and they were like, well, where's the challenge? Well, this, well, what if Mickey Mouse didn't listen yeah. to you? <laughs> what if he didn't? Like, I'm surprised they could have, I think they should have leaned into it more and just literally called it, like, Mercurial Mickey. Or you know? <laughs> like, so, anyways, it's everything. I have associated with this game is trash. So that is my story. Um, 
I don't. It, 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 it had a bad reputation at the time as well, didn't it? Yeah, oh like, yes, no one, no one was fond of this fucking thing. But Nintendo still put it out in America and Europe. Yeah, well, I guess I mean there's a really like pretty long-standing thing in Europe, isn't there, of them putting out these uh, Disney. And most of the Disney games also got published by NOA. Yeah, so it's you know it, it was part of their I guess they felt like it was something that was expected you know almost maybe at this point it was a part of our appeal of our like platforms is like we you know we've we're strong with the kids we've got to have the Disney representation we're going to make sure that happens but uh, yes. sometimes it does stuff like this. it does have link cable support I believe with Disney's Magical Quest starring Mickey and Minnie on GBA which we'll get to. I forget, I forget what that was, but the GBA game, I believe, was all right, and the GameCube version is hot trash. <laughs> well, I, I, what do you reckon, three? <laughs> sure. Is, yeah, let's go with that. Uh, Star Fox Adventures. Yeah, I did not own this. I've never play, played it much. I, uh, I, yeah, I, a friend had a copy once, and I saw him play a little bit of it. And, you know, it looked nice at the time, uh, but it, I did, the reviews didn't quite persuade. I was very sort of up for it, you know, like, I was like, yeah, love Star Fox, enjoyed Rare games, you know, kind of like, you know a, a Zelda type of game. I certainly enjoyed the 3D Zeldas I played to that point. So there was quite a bit of enthusiasm before it came out, and then... You know, it did come out, and it's like, eh, I don't, even with the lower price, it was it was a more difficult decision, because before it would have been, you know, if it was an N64 game, if it was Dinosaur Planet, it's oh, it's too expensive, forget it. Whereas with this, it was more like, well, you know, it's not that expensive to get now. I could take a chance, but I didn't, and I, I, I to this day, I have not. Well, you skipped a bunch of racism, so, you know. <laughs> and this is uh, rare on their way out the door, isn't it? Um, yeah, this is how how much tribal racism can we squeeze in before Microsoft buys us? Yeah, it's... um. Cool. A lot of the things that have endured about the game are things that are bad, you know, like... The yes. Bath my dads, or the, you know, the bloody voice acting, or the... Stupid uh, last boss that James loves to go on. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know. So that's the pro that's all I've really got to go on. Um, but it's uh, yeah, fine. I, I, like I, said, I read plenty of reviews at the time. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of like, well, you know, it's a Zelda, you know, kind of you know, game patterned on Zelda, but you know, with a few Star Fox sequences, got a shoehorned in, and you know, rare collecting and stuff. But uh, a, a, a five, I think it's, it's you know. I, can't really go beyond that, I don't think. Okay. Mario Party 4. So this one is one that even Mario Party fans look at this one and be like, yeah, all you did was make one on the GameCube. Oh, really? Yeah, see, you know, so I, I'm not sure which Mario Party I played when I had a little bit of a um, go. It, it, it was a GameCube one. But yeah. If, so I there's... Have to It'd probably be the five, but not five is the one that had a bunch of extra modes, including like mech battles and <laughs> all this weird, weird filler shit. So, yeah, I, with this one, I think we'll just go with a five and leave it at that. That's, are we? Uh, are you? Are you uh, subconsciously doing what James did and lowering? Uh, the score by one every time until there's a substantial change. <laughs> well, it definitely factors in a bit in terms of just redoing these things year on year, and mm -hmm. it's not particularly evolving. Like it, 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 you know, in the minds of consumers at the time, I think it just it loses impact. It loses, yes, you know, the ability to entertain. So uh, it does. That's fair. The score does does go down. All right, on to GBA, because there's no GBC games this year. <laughs> yeah, it's kind uh, of quick, actually. In a way. Yeah. <laughs> but it was so short-lived. And, of course, you know, in the end, like, when GBA, like, they, they kind of killed that off relatively quickly. Oh, and... they they love killing their handhelds. Case in point, there's a handheld that is introduced and exited this year. <laughs> we'll get there. I don't know what the bloody hell I'm going to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> We're, well, get ready. So, yeah, yeah, Golden so, Sun. 
Never played it. Never Ooh. played it. I, uh, I, you know, because it's funny because you know, I'd kind of I'd got to like the Camelot sports games. I kind of knew they had mm -hmm. an RPG background, and of course the handheld games had RPG elements. Um, and then you know this reviewed very well at the time, yep. so it was definitely something I was interested in. But I didn't get around to it, and in fact, I didn't get around to it on Virtual Console either. Mm. So it's yeah, it's still kind of a gap. It's uh, fine. And it's there's there's definitely compared to the you know, uh, let's say relatively, relatively sort of positive consensus on it in the, at the time. It's definitely more things I've seen you know over the years of like oh it was kind of crappy actually but uh you know that's people feel that way probably about just about everything that other people like uh but yeah uh hard for me to weigh in on that sort of uh score with any authority that I have in the background I mean it's um it was certainly important I think you know to have a kind of again when you're sort of trying to fill this kind of vibe of you know like the types of experiences that were big on Super Nintendo. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, at that time, we had not yet achieved detente between Nintendo and Square. Uh, that wouldn't happen until 03. Uh, we, we, you know, kind of, and, then, and then the actual sort of fruits of that didn't filter through, you know, for a while either. Yes. Um, because you know that's why you get Final Fantasy VI on GBA in like 2007. <laughs> it's like it all could have been happening a lot sooner, but it didn't. Uh, so with this, I think it probably would want to go a, a, a six and a half, but I'll go with a six. Okay. Advanced Wars. Yeah. So uh, I, I ended up actually a friend of mine had a copy of this. And he really, really liked it, was really addicted to it, and he let me borrow it, and that's how I played it. Um, and it is very, very good. I enjoyed it a lot, even though pretty much, you know, no kind of background with uh, turn-based strategy stuff uh, at the time. So I think an eight. Okay. Super Mario World, Super Mario Advance 2. Well, great game. Obviously, we've covered it once, and I love it a lot. It's a, a tremendously sort of formative experience for me. Uh, but you know, this version, as I said earlier, I got a chance to check it out on Wii U. Uh, it kind of appealed to me, sort of doing all the dragon coins and stuff. Also, got unique Luigi mechanics and sprites. It's true. Uh, uh, you know, to kind of take in there. Do have the problem of. The, uh, the 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 lesser visible play area, which is not great in Mario World, because the original, you know, a lot of the design of those levels, like what you could see and what you couldn't see, was was very deliberate about, you know, mm -hmm. okay, like, do you want to sort of probe a particular area, you know, like something that's just out of sight to find, you know, is there a secret passageway up there, so, you know, a key hole and exit to another level so when you make everything less visible it makes that design kind of less apparent to the player so it's not a trivial thing and it's never a trivial thing but even even more so with this so hmm, i think seven okay disney's Mi magical quest starring mickey and minnie uh, which, by the way, GX says that the uh, link bonus for connecting the two games is you get some additional decorations in Mickey's room in the GameCube game. Wow. So, I'm sure it's just... Uh, Connectivity at its finest. Yeah, it's a little bit... I did just, just remember having play, been played the um, 3DS version of Kirby's Epic Yarn. It kind of reminds me of those all that decorating that you do for the the, the, the people in the block of flats or whatever. Yep. <laughs> but, yeah, it's... Uh, Mm. Uh, so uh, this this is uh, more is this a platformer as opposed to an adventure game i or? think it, yeah i'm pretty sure this one is a platformer let me just double check uh would you believe uh that disney's and then magic does not give you much yeah this <laughs> is um yeah this is super nintendo conversion we're firmly down that sort of stretch uh mm, yeah it's um 
I think a five is going to have to be the case here without much to go on. Okay. Yoshi's Island Super Mario Advance 3 released weeks after Advance 2. I mean, it is a very different game than Super Mario World, so it's like, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, uh, oh, the, the, the irony in that, you know, it was originally labelled in the West Super Mario World 2 five yeah. years after, you know, it originally came out in Japan, and now it's coming out weeks apart <laughs> from Super Mario World. But, uh, yeah, it obviously, this one probably suffers similarly uh, as to what I said with Super Mario World, because again, like what's what you can and can't see was with the layouts was very, you know, the layouts were tailored to the visible play area, and then you know it's all about finding you know the flowers and the red coins and all this kind of stuff, and it's just it does suffer from that, and also the GBA couldn't quite replicate all the kind of Super FX two kind of trickery in the same way so some of it is a bit less smooth uh, you know kind of uh, less vivid uh, notably the old touch fuzzy thing for instance so it's got some extra levels uh, if I remember correctly um, yeah for, for, for like I think I don't, I don't know whether they ch how they changed the criteria now in terms of was it that maybe you didn't have to get perfect scores anymore to get the old unlockable levels or, or that I think it was something like that. Yeah, but there was now there was like one set of unlockable levels that you needed to get perfect scores for, but then another set that you didn't, you know, just like just uh, you got another way or just by having like scores up to a certain threshold or something. So I guess it's nice that maybe there was some rewards that weren't tied to just being perfect, but um, a game I like a lot, um, but a kind of a somewhat compromised version, a seven again. Okay. Game & Watch Gallery 4. Now I'm going to yeah. try and get through all these games. Yeah, well, I talked about we've talked about this a lot. It's been foreshadowed a lot, this one. Uh, but yes. I still haven't actually played it. The Wii U Virtual Console did not get around to it. It'd be <laughs> nice if it could, you know, be like part uh -huh. of a NSO type thing at some <laughs> yeah, point. Yeah, I don't know. If they do GBA games on that. Or uh, but, yeah. Um, so this has... Fire, Boxing, Rain Shower, Mario Cement Factory, DK Jr., DK3, Chef, Mario Brothers, Donkey Kong, Octopus, Fire Attack. Still no Super Mario Brothers, still no Zelda. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it kind of, it's a Waluigi, like, sneak into this in some way. <laughs> yeah, like, probably. The Mario theme. I seem to remember James streaming a bit of this once or so. I, I, yeah, that I, seems I like something that they would do, those One monsters. Of the one of the rare times that Waluigi kind of got to branch out of just the competitive, like, you know, uh, golf, tennis, uh, kart, you know, kind of uh, yes. party, you know, those those games. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's certainly, you know, at this point, you've got, like, the breadth of content that uh, some of the ones very much lacked and all that. So, uh, seven for this. Okay. And then last for GBA of the year... Metroid Fusion. Yeah, I had this. I played this. By the time this came out, uh, I was at university, uh, so I had my GBA, and it was kind of, and of course that and Met Metroid Prime were coming out uh, at about the same time, weren't they? Uh, but um, I kind of thought, well, I'll, I'll, I can play Fusion now on my handheld, and then I'll kind of uh, play uh, Prime over the Christmas break. So Fusion came first, and I really, really enjoyed Fusion. I really did. It was, um, you know, kind of... It had been, obviously, several years since I played Super Metroid. I've been you know, looking forward to the idea of playing more such games. but And it, it took a while, and it felt like a long time in those days. But the uh, even though it was different, you know, and, uh, and whatnot, it, it, uh, I, I really took to the kind of action emphasis, you know, the number of bosses and the kind of more disciplined boss design really kind of appealed to me in this. And even though, you know, it's still a bit of bloat with uh, the text, uh, it's much, much less so than something like, than what Other M would do years later. And the scenario is fun. I, I like the the scenario on the space station and the 
the power after obviously it's you know clearly referencing alien resurrection a bit uh, as as other metroid games would reference other alien films with the uh, samus getting becoming part alien uh, or part metroid in this case but also the x parasites are basically like the thing from the thing which uh, is is very much a film, one of my favorite films i think also the thing the the movie uh, in japan is called like objects from planet x so the fact that they're called the X Parasite is like very on the nose <laughs> in that sense. Yep. Uh, so I uh, I really like it, even though it's uh, you know it's not really the platonic ideal of a Metroid game, but I still I still think it's pretty effective. So I'll go with an eight, eight and a half probably, but I'll still go eight. Okay. All right, Pokemon Party Mini. Okay, so we are at the Pokemon Mini thing, which I've got to be honest, I totally flew over my head that this even was a thing that had like game. Well, I don't know whether cartridges is the right word, but they essentially were like you know cartridges weren't they? You know they were separate mm -hmm. games that you put it. I, I I don't think I don't think that really even picked up with me, and I was probably just like thinking of it as being some sort of Tomagotchi. You know, super Tomagotchi, yeah, exactly. So I really do know precious little about this. You, uh, GX just posted one, the screen resolution, which is 96 by 64, and an image that highlights that so that you can, <laughs> so that you can get reference. Yes. Wow, indeed, Wobbuffet. Wow, indeed. So. Yeah, basically, just to just to run down what we've got, we've got um, a weird little chintzy party game, um, a t clumsy pinball game, um, a collection of puzzles that are maybe I, I think in my memory it's like Yoshi's Cookie, right. um, a card game, and the sequel to Tetris, Pokemon Tetris. The sequel to Tetris, Pokemon Tetris. Uh, uh. <laughs> so, those are the five games that came out. More came out in Japan. This is all they put out in Europe. Yeah, it makes sense. No, you were, I, I'm I surprised that you weren't importing every single one of these. No, well, again, I, I mean, <laughs> all I could say is at this time, I still hadn't actually played Pokemon. So no, okay. that's totally fair. Had I done, you don't know. You don't know if I'd got. I, maybe I would have fallen in really bloody hard, and like decided, you know what? I need everything Pokemon going. Yeah, but, uh, very zoomed out um, picture of what the pinball looks like. Uh, let's have a look. Oh yes, yes. I, I love that the, we're still in the um, clear plastic era. Oh, well. and well. and so they're all. Um, all of the color schemes for the minis themselves are like smoochum pink or whooper blue. A whooper blue, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Uh, yeah, I just, not a lot to go on here. It's very a bit like the sort of uh, the Game of Watch situation we were in uh, after, you know, however many weeks back. So, <laughs> I mean, it's, pro it's probably like threes and fours or something. Like, yeah. It's, it's, there any that the that we think deserve to be more on on the three than the four and uh, just... my guess is that uh party and pinball are probably the worst yeah so why uh, this go threes for them and fours for the rest okay all right 5.7 despite the fact that this is the melee year this yeah, is also the year they put out Mag disney's magical mirror and all the pokemon minis yeah, that's true. And some other stuff, you know, kind of uh, got marked down a little bit. Yes. Yeah, you know, some, some of these games, you know, especially like the GBA ports and stuff, like they're really, really great games. But, you know, the actual particular version, maybe, yeah. you know, kind of just not as great. Oh, no, th what this is, uh, is this is a preview for what uh, 2009 is going to bring. <laughs> because you're thinking of all of the um like all of the console games that came out in 09 and like new super mario Bros. wii and some of the great ds games 
and then your your soul is going to leave your body when I tell you to rate every single electroplankton experience individually. <laughs> because that's how Nintendo sold them. And it's going to plummet the average. Wow. Um, all right. 2003. You've got to have something to look forward to, haven't you? Yes. All right. Back. The GBC is back, baby. Whoa! Is that, look, where is this? Oh, I can't tell. Okay. Well, that's not what I would have guessed. But I, I was never going to guess right there, to be fair. Yes, alright. On GameCube, we've got Metroid Prime. Yeah, the aforementioned Metroid Prime, like I said, it, 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 I do remember this being a thing of like, yep, you know, the UK, Europe's not getting it until, you know, into next year. Uh, I was importing, so... You know, it, it didn't bother me. But uh, I guess another thing which we, could, we haven't touched on yet with GameCube in Europe is that I, at, at this time, and I'm not sure, because again, I was playing Japanese GameCube all the yeah. time, but they had, they started to kind of have 60 hertz modes in some games at this time. Yeah, like, I think it was like on back of box, it would say if it was 50 or 50 and 60. Yeah, and, and actually, by towards the end, I think they kind of gave so little of a shit that, like, Metro Prime 2 was only 60. <laughs> 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 I think that was, uh, you know, multiple factors in terms of, like, probably knew it wasn't going to sell well enough anyway, and just, like, we could, you know, so, yeah. But it, it, it definitely was progress relative to, you know, where we'd been. And then, of course, by the Wii era, yeah, but anything NOE puts out pretty much is going to be, you know, 50 or 60, depending on what TV, what your TV could display. Although yes. I think, you know, certainly by the turn of the century, most British televisions could display 60 hertz. So we had one, you know, in the early 90s, you know, the beginning of the 90s that could do it. So it wasn't novel at all by, by this point in, yes. in history. But still, at uh, this time, there was, I, I, I don't know which ones, unfortunately. I, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you which ones uh, in particular. I wasn't able to look it up, so. Yeah, it's, it's tricky. I, I, well, I definitely have to look it up when we get to F0GX, because it's yes. very important. In that is very important. Some of these other ones we're probably more just gonna have to go over it. But back to Metroid Prime, yeah, I got to, I did play it over that Christmas break uh, with with university and just absolutely loved it. It's such a such a journey this one in terms of you know the, all the store because again I sort of touched on this a bit with some of the rare stuff because it was being developed outside of Japan. There was more reporting on you know how is development going and all that yes over. whereas with rare i would generally be thinking of you know positive kind of coverage in british magazines because you know uh they could actually go to twycross or whatever and, and talk to these people uh in the case of uh retro and uh, metro prime it was more reported coming out of you know the american press and the on online of course that all was not well <laughs> yes know, there was a lot of turmoil and and people leadership having a go and projects getting canned and the whole you know metroid project itself having to be kind of uh, you know, heavily revised it all sounded bad uh, and and of course there was a lot of sentiment at the time that just putting it in first person sounded like a bad idea and, and all these things so when it reviewed so well it was kind of an upset uh, and then just actually playing it, uh, you know, was uh, I, I still felt like, wow, like this is, you know, presentationally uh, really, really strong. Like I am impressed that the, the GameCube can do this kind of stuff. Um, and also just how well a lot of the Metroid, not everything, but a lot of the Metroid kind of uh, formula and gameplay came across in, in first person. Um, so I think it's uh, there's things in retrospect you know, played through it on the trilogy version um, quite you know, ten years ago now more, but uh, that that's my most recent playthrough where you know it's you see some of the the less kind of well executed things and and maybe some of the things that it didn't bring across from metroid like the the feeling of sort of speed 
uh, you know, that Samus can have in, in the side scrolling games. Um, I think the some of the as the game goes on, the combat it doesn't really evolve in a meaningful way. Mm-hmm. It evolves in a way of, you know, like, oh, we'll use the correct beam to kill this thing. And it's like, oh, well, you know, fundamentally nothing's changed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just, More yeah, menus. Pick the one that works with the C stick or whatever. It, it, it just, yeah, that wasn't, um, you know, uh, and, and the combat in general, like, I think. I, I, I like the fact that it wasn't just a me too kind of uh, FPS for the time where it's just like, oh, we're going to do dual sticks and the combat's going to work like that. Like, I like the fact that it was more like Zelda, because uh, I like Zelda, uh, and that it was more kind of puzzle-ish and, you know, because it was, it was uh, a, you know, an action adventure rather than just a shooter. I liked all that, but I do think the sequels, while they're not sort of unambiguously better than the original in, 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 in a number of respects, they did make combat more interesting eventually, like especially three with the stacking beams and the, you know, the, the fact that uh, you could aim more freely with the Wii remote and stuff like it, the combat got a lot better. And it, it, it's, I think at the time it was good enough that you kind of enjoyed everything else about the game. Didn't think about it too much. Or at least I didn't, but in retrospect, it's, it, it comes up, you know, it, it rears its head more it's just like yeah it's kind of simple it's just kind of yeah there's not that much to it um so great game made a huge impact at the time i think it's probably eight and a half nine this one but uh i'll go with a nine okay wind waker speaking of things that maybe are have an amazing game but shows its weakness at the end yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot in common, obviously. Uh, yes. They both have these bits where it's kind of like dragging it out a bit more. But I think, I mean, Prime, it's it's not as egregious, certainly, especially as you know, Wind, Wind Waker in its original form, or its original, original form in, ja- in Japan, where it was even worse, apparently, uh, with the tingle fiends yes. for translating your charts and all this sort of stuff. And then, obviously, Wind Waker HD made it, you know, softened it further um but i think with, with metro prime it's kind of uh it, like I said, it didn't feel as egregious um and there were some of those things you could kind of get a little bit out of sequence um i'm not sure why they doubled down and made it worse in the second one though like in terms of the uh the key the artifact key type hunt in the second one is like more um, yeah yeah kind of like of a, a kind of busy work fest uh, than than it was in the first one but yeah with wind waker same old story but more so than prime and it's in more so more ways than just the, the sort of pre end you know the sort of uh the prelude to the to the kind of uh, end game being this like fetch questy thing or whatever it's uh, the, there's a number of ways in which it is it, it's again not necessarily i think to the same extent as sunshine but just it doesn't have the same sort of it doesn't feel like it's had the same number of passes over it as as maybe other nintendo games that of, of this sort of uh import to them you know in the big franchises but uh you know when i played it in uh i think it was about april of 03 somewhere around there um i was in general really really taken with it and again in those days, even as getting as late as 03, the appeal of the visuals, it didn't really come across on the internet until, until you had it. You, yep. it. you did really. Metro Prime is certainly something that looked, you know, the, the, the screenshots did it you know, more sort of justice than with Wind Waker. Once you have it, once you saw it in motion, you know, and it's all synced up with the way that you use the audio and all that, the presentation is just sublime. Um, I do, as much as I like Wind Waker HD, I do hope we get a chance to play it the way it originally looked again. Mm-hmm. Because um, it's just different. It, it, it is. It, it, the way they light everything in, in Wind Waker HD is very, it's quite sort of bewitching, but it gives the characters this kind of plasticine model kind of quality, which is quite different from the, you know, the, the, the more explicitly cartoonish look that they originally had. Um, but. Um, all in all, it's a bit too flawed for me to say it's right up there with the very, very best 
uh, of Zelda, but what is wonderful about it is truly wonderful and has held up very well. So I think overall an eight. Okay. Wario World. Yeah, I have this one again. Definitely a beneficiary of being able to get it. I think even like this was it, like a decent deal specifically, but also just in general, like especially by O three. I think uh, the deficit spending of the Bush administration at the time had virtually got us to the point where the pound was like two to one with the dollar. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it what whereas like today it's like one to three point one one to one three four so you know i mean if, if that's the cumulative effect of the financial crisis and leaving the european union for you but of course you know, it, it's uh it was very different back then it was there was this 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 feeling of like god like everything is so cheap so i did this was something i took a chance on uh, because it didn't review that well and sure uh, didn't I, I i'm not sure if it was typ who reviewed it for uh, planet gamecube at the time but uh, it may have been him, and it may have been that review that specifically said, like, basically, the continue system makes no sense. It feels like it's just been put in at the last minute to say, like, oh, actually, this is a bit too hard for people to go back to the start of the level. So how about if we just offered them the chance to just, like, pay in-game currency to continue? And then it completely, if you do that, it robs the game of any kind of sense of challenge or balance. So I thought, look, I'll just play it and I won't use that. And I actually had a decent time with it as a result. It's, it's weird because it's like kind of like a brawler, but then it has these like um, platform sort of, sort of sub levels. You're going to warp off to a level in the sky, I think. And it's almost like. 3D world, so Super Mario 3D world, like you know, or like Captain Toad, you know, like it's it's sort of a block based, like kind of like a diorama mm. platforming challenge and stuff. And I'm sure, again, you know, relative to how those things have been done now, you know, probably not particularly impressive. But again, at the time, it was like, oh, this is cool. I like this kind of 3D platform. So there was because it it was also it was developed by Treasure, and it has some of their kind of um, you know, kind of flashes of creativity that you might have expected from some of their other things. Like there's one level which heavily features like a, a mirror where you kind of like sometimes you're primarily keying off, you know, actually Wario and sometimes it's his reflection and, you know, having to adjust for that and some of the bosses and all that. So I definitely not as down on it as some people, but it squarely felt like it was a, a kind of a B tier type of, you know, it's just like, look, we. Mm -hmm don't want there to be as many gaps with, with with software releases as there used to be we're on n64 so we want games that we can you know commission others to make that are you know kind of not too costly and not too long in the oven and that is very much this game i i would go with a six i'm sure people would go lower but uh, okay. that's my... um f-zero gx i was able to confirm supported a 50 or 60 toggle in europe well that's that's the yeah, that's a big deal so uh, this this is uh it's probably another thing might might have had, it, it, it wouldn't go as far as the 10 as i did with, with melee but still a nine for this because uh really really great game uh obviously you know it's uh in some ways maybe its reputation benefits from the fact that you know, unlike what we're talking about with stuff like sunshine it has had nothing to supersede it really you know but it's had some gba games came out after this but you know it, <laughs> no, it, there's nothing that nintendo has done that could sort of shame this you know because they haven't followed it up but sega coming in Obviously, very heavily patterned on F Zero X. It's very much the same, you know. There's the boost mechanics, the thirty car field, and all that. But the the as we said, so many sacrifices were made aesthetically to get F Zero X to play the way it played. And then with uh, GX, it's like go on GameCube. Those sacrifices can be kind of dialed back, and we can still have you know, the silky smooth 
frame rate we can still have all the car uh, the cars on the track at the same time but now it actually looks really cool why they're doing it and uh, it's a superficial thing but uh, it does enhance the experience quite a lot the story mode stuff i mean it's kind of you know they gave us more things to do in single player i guess which i'm not going to say no to uh some of that stuff worked better than others i did end up like i think several months after i kind of said fuck this i did come back and eventually do everything in that my god that is some of the most difficult and uh frustrating things i can remember doing in a racing game i got there in the end but uh, it had all sorts of like customization like you could make make cars i guess probably carried over from the 64 dd expansion kit uh to some extent you know for, for, for f0x you can make your own cars and of course like you could take your memory card and stick it in the the ax in the arcade uh, if you were you know, lucky enough it's certain place god knows where you would have done that in europe but <laughs> that that happened so yeah just a, a great realization of of the promise of of the f0 series up to that point and uh yeah, I've, I've got back to it periodically we did a x slash gx retroactive and i think it holds up pretty well Awesome. Mario Kart Double Dash. Yeah, well, I had this uh, on GameCube. Um, and, of course, you know, interesting sort of reputation that this had, you know, kind of didn't land that well at the time. Um, you know, uh, I guess sort of a lot of it, I recall, was, you know, that it was slow, uh, you know, that kind of thing. But I, I forget all the different criticisms that people had. I guess it's, it's not the most memorable game. I did enjoy the sort of uh, where I, on the few occasions I got to do it, like doing the kind of co-op thing, you know, where you have two people driving the same car, essentially, but you're like swapping out, uh, out between, you know, the kind of uh, uh, support role managing the items and the person actually driving. Um, you know, I always thought that was kind of fun. And I'm a little bit surprised, given Nintendo's uh, sort of uh, weird kind of predilection for returning to sort of asymmetric multiplayer concepts, that uh, they didn't go revisit this somewhere with on Wii U or you know some other opportunity for that. Um, but you know, I think it was. Uh, yeah, pretty. They had to, some fun options in multiplayer. I remember enjoying like the uh, the battle mode quite a bit, and yeah, some of the track designs were you know quite good and have come back you know in, in subsequent games. It wasn't the best looking game, I seem to recall. <laughs> I do, uh, but no, it know, looks it, fine. It, it's it's one of these things. Obviously, it's just such a different aesthetic and all that. But like F Zero was so <laughs> much more impressive to look at than this. But obviously, it's a, you know, it's, again, it's totally different style. I, I'd go with uh, a six on this one. Okay, Mario Party Five, which just added a bunch of gimmicks. Yeah. No hardware gimmicks yet. That's six. No, we've we've not hit the microphone yet, but. Uh... I'd probably just just go to a five again. Okay, 1080 Avalanche. Yeah, so uh, again, I guess this was um, this was NST again, right? Live mm -hmm. Wave Race, Blue Storm. You know, doing a oh, yeah. kind of follow up to an N64 game. I think it was called Silver Storm in Japan, like to match Blue Storm. You know, they mm. kind of you know, they, they were <laughs> clearly identify them as similar sort of. Pro projects but unlike wave race i didn't actually get to play this um so i, I seem to remember it was sort of uh, had a solid enough kind of uh, reception but nothing particularly kind of remarkable is that is that can yeah uh, cons that's consistent. yeah so so perhaps a six for that okay soul caliber 2 featuring link yes yes featuring link i had this uh that, you know, re reviewed very very well I had not a lot of experience with 3D fighters at this point. I'd played, you know, a few go back to just me messing around in arcades in the mid 90s. I had a friend who had Virtual Fighter on the Saturn, and you know that this sort of thing. I've never really sort of owned one and sunk my teeth into one before this. So it was mm. past. It was past time. 
you know, uh, and the reviews are so positive and links in it. There's you know, just a, a cherry on top, like, you know, as I, 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 uh, I got this and uh, I enjoyed it. You know, I mean, it probably took me a bit longer to kind of get into it than a lot of people who had that experience. I think I did see um, a friend of mine who had the Dreamcast um, Soul Calibur or whatever, like, you know. I Soul Calibur 1, yeah. Yeah, I saw that a little bit as well. So it kind of you know, piqued my interest, but I just didn't have the experience. So it took a while, but I warmed to it. And, uh, you know, I remember playing it for quite a long time. So I think an eight for that. Okay. All right, Game Boy Color, Hamtaro, <laughs> Ham Ham Unite. Ham Ham Unite. I, I know nothing about Hamtaro, and I certainly know nothing about this game. <laughs> so, uh, I... I, I guess it's Hamtaro was like like happening in some fashion that the NOE had to felt there was value in, so, in this GBA game out or GBC. Oh, um, yeah, 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 this is the GBA game. Sorry. Yes, the um, yeah. I mean, Hamtaro is getting big around oh one oh two. These games got published by Nintendo everywhere, including America and Japan. So this is not just an NOE okay. thing. Right. Um, but yes, I, this must have been, if they're putting out the GBC game now in 03, this must have just been, hey, Hamtaro is hitting Europe. Um, and it's cute. It's aimed at children. It's, you know, hamsters going on hamster adventures. Yeah. Well, uh, let's say, let's say a, a six. All yeah. right. What what about uh, Ham Taro Ham Ham Heartbreak? Ham Ham Heartbreak. Well, I guess at least they were able to more fully commit to the alliteration. In, in yes. The, you know, didn't quite uh, get there with, uh, with the no. previous one. Yeah. Again, no no uh, no particular ability to judge this. So I, I guess just stick with the six. Okay. Golden Sun to the Lost Age. So yeah, this is very much a direct sequel, isn't it? Like they oh, kind of, yeah. like, really pick everything kind of picked up where you left off and you kind of continued on and all that. So, you know, and again it reviewed well though, but yeah, for me, obviously I would have had to have played the first one to really consider this. Oh, yes. Uh, definitely. And, and I didn't, so mm, yeah, it's uh I'm not sure you yeah, mechanically how it, if it sort of iterated at all or any of that kind of thing on, on the first game other than just advancing the story was there uh, any sense of improvement or... yeah there were there were like quality of life improvements but it's primarily here's the direct sequel yeah uh maybe maybe a seven for that one okay kirby nightmare in dreamland yeah, I played this on Wii U Virtual Console when it was going cheap. Uh, just, just kind of uh, see... Because it's, it's Kirby's Adventure, basically. This yes. This is the, the remake uh, on GBA. So I'd already played Kirby's Adventure uh, and really, really liked it. Um, and then this was kind of like, okay, well, let, let's just see the... the you know, and it was cheap. Uh, so kind of similar to the Super Mario Advance a story from earlier on it's just kind of like for that money i'm willing to try it i know it's a game i like and let's just see how the you know the differences are and stuff and uh you know it's kind of a little bit uh, at times it's not like it's, it's not as unambiguously kind of nicer than the original as mm -hmm. you might expect considering it's more of a sort of super nintendo style presentation than but it was just such a terrific looking nes game in the first place uh, but yeah, so some of the things kind of feel a little bit more, I don't know, like uh, static or you know, like it's it just not quite um, as alive as the uh, as the original version. But you know, generally speaking, it is quite a nice presentation. But the biggest thing that it brings to the party, uh, which is something I think by the time I actually played this, I kind of discovered I liked, was um, in Kirby. Uh, uh, Triple Deluxe, uh, the 3D, the first 3DS mm -hmm. game. There was a, a the, the DDD speed run kind of mode. Yes. And this game, obviously many years earlier, had that with Meta Knight, and that was one of the things that I really wanted to play. You know, and and it is it's fun. I I, I 
for me, there's something about Kirby where, where if it forces you to be in a rush, it just kind of enhances it to me. Uh, even though, obviously, it can be very nice to play Kirby in the kind of slow, relaxing and in, absorb the, the sort of pleasantness of it. Um, when it's like, OK, well, now you have to rush. It's a little bit different. You, you kind of you, you have to think about your mobility a little bit more. It's not about, you know, can you make a jump or whatever? Because, of course, you can make every jump normally. <laughs> you know, kind of thing. You can just yeah. puff up. Fly. It's can you do it at speed? Can you maintain speed? And all this kind of stuff. Uh, 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 speed run modes fit kind of really quite well with the Kirby template, I think. So yeah, it's brought a few, uh, this brought some things to the table. So I think seven. Okay. Uh, Pokemon Ruby and Pokemon Sapphire. Yeah, so this was basically the first time that I owned a bit of hardware as a new generation of Pokemon was coming out. And in some ways, you know, it's kind of like why I hadn't gone back to uh, Gold and Silver or Crystal. You know, it was like, well, you know, the next generation will be coming. Maybe I'll get in on this. And then I never did. And I'm not entirely sure why hmm. I didn't. Um, it, because it's like I was very much thinking like when you know the GBA gets here and over the you know I will I because you know I'd, I'd seen stuff of the anime and stuff like that I, I like cute stuff like there's lots yeah. of Pokemon and there's like, like, six Pokemon games if you count the different versions on GBA yeah it was really heavily concentrated at this or time five. but yeah, I think so, some of the reason is because some of it was I've talked about this with other things in the past is like when there's always like the next one, it's kind of like I, I like I didn't play uh, stuff like um, Harmony of Dissonance, the Castlevania game, or I didn't play um, the other one, Portrait of Ruin, because it's kind of like oh yeah, but there'll be another one next year, and maybe that one will be better. You know, it kind of like. It makes it a little bit harder mm -hmm. to say this is the one for you, and it just like it reviewed well, but it didn't. I think even then there wasn't as much sort of overflow with um, enthusiasm as there was for Gold and Silver, so it did kind of feel like well, maybe I'll wait and get the you know the the, uh, the third version, or maybe we'll wait again, and so it just it just never happened until DS era. So I can't really speak to this. Um. um. Probably the most interesting thing that this did is that it um, it represents... So the, the biggest downside is that uh, Gold and Silver to Ruby Sapphire is the only clean break that they've ever had where you can't bring your Pokemon from previous forward. Hmm. So if you played Ruby and Sapphire in 2003 on a GBA cartridge... You can get those Pokemon all the way up to Sword and Shield, right, like those yeah. exact Pokemon. But um, and you can get it from the first, uh, from, uh, Red and Red through Crystal, um, uh, if you played those on the 3DS Virtual Console. Those right. versions move upward, but you can't take GB to GBC into the GBA. But the most interesting things that Ruby Sapphire does is that the story and the villains are version specific. Oh, okay. So that the the villain the story in these games is that there's eco-terrorism uh, organizations competing ones team Aqua and team Magma and that if you're in Ruby, the villains are team Magma who wants to uh, use Pokémon to increase the amount of land mass to support more human population on the planet <laughs> uh, and fuck that ocean thing and team aqua is trying to stop them and then um team aqua is the opposite is that humans are destroying the environment we have to create more ocean space um what, what if we could have the worst of both worlds oh like that is the, well if we could destroy the environment and have more ocean coverage yeah i mean that is pokemon emerald where they're both villains <laughs> well yeah I, I don't know yeah that is interesting because i mean the whole version difference thing i mean it's it's you know, been so slight a lot of the time it's kind yeah of interesting i mean the case where it was it was actually you know seemed like maybe they felt at that time a greater need to to differentiate yes. beyond just like well a certain subset of creatures are only available in a respective yeah place. like in um red and blue 
it was very slight in um gold and silver introduced the concept of the cover legendary the yeah. the legendary pokemon that you could only get in that version it was, it was starters in uh, yeah that's all was on the cover as, as you might imagine from the names and, uh, yes and it was were they green in japan right? yeah it was green and red um, and then we got blue and red, and Japan did get blue, which was basically the Western bug fix version for yeah. Japan. And then uh, everyone got yellow. Everyone got yellow, exactly. And then in then it was gold, silver, and then crystal. And there it is really, the difference between gold and silver is Ho-Oh Lugia as the cover legendaries, and then a further subset of kind of standard Pokemon that are exclusive. And then here, you get that with Kyogre Grout on your cover legendaries, but you also get uh, actual changes to the narrative. And of course, if you are playing uh, with different villains, as you might expect, if you're playing Pokemon Ruby, uh, your grass-type Pokemon are going to be less effective against Team Magma's fire-types. Uh, yeah. But if you're playing Sapphire, your grass-type will be better. You just don't want to run in with fire-types. So, like, there's also typing differences between the versions. So, like, it is a lot more interesting and thought through as, like, a time capsule of where the different versions were, versioning was at. No, no, see, there's, uh, I, I, I certainly couldn't have told you that, even though I assume, you know, this would have come up again when they, when they were remade for the 3DS, yep. uh, you know, in, in the same sort of yep. way, which I, I didn't get around to, so I, so I played... Um, Diamond and Pearl, play, then played the Gold Silver remakes and Sun and Moon and Sword and Shield, but yeah, that, that's it. That's my Pokemon mm. which, is, which is, you know, it's quite a few different games. Oh yeah, no, it, it, it's that's a that's a fair breadth, but yes, missed a lot, and yes. especially some of the more sort of nuanced differences between how they approach certain things in the, the different generations. So, mm, I think maybe. A seven. Okay. Uh, it's very, very kind of ignorant, I must say. Um, well, maybe you'll know a little bit more about this one. Legend of <laughs> Zelda, A Link to the Past and Four Swords. Yeah, so I've, I've never played this version of A Link to oh. the Past. I've, I've not, not I've gone back and done it. It just, uh, yeah, with a lot of these ones, I've, I've kind of ended up maybe, you know, when it's been a, a virtual console thing, or you got it for cheap or something. You know, just to see, uh, as we talked about Super Mario World and so forth. But with this, I've never done it, which is, yeah, I'm not sure why. Uh, it didn't particularly appeal to me at the time when it was new, like the idea of, like, okay, I just I love Link to the Past, played it to death. But, you know, I guess, you know, if I, the problem is I was too slow to bloody uh, upgrade my GBA. I guess this is just, you know, being, mm. uh, being uh, stubborn. Even even as a younger man, you know, to, to, quite a sort of stubborn, slow to upgrade things, you know, kind of. Uh, so so it's like I had my original GBA model and I played a whole bunch of games on it, but you know, maybe if it was better, uh, if I'd upgraded to an SP or something, uh, then I might have thought like that was a more appealing prospect. Yes. But, by 2003, a lot of the time I spent playing GBA games was on the TV. <laughs> with, with Game Boy Player. Uh, with Game Boy Player, like, yeah, because... It's, it's the antithesis of your current situation. It is, exactly. As, as, so, you know, don't say I don't change, or something about me didn't change anything. <laughs> but, you know, so uh, that, that was the... That's, that's the way things were, and I guess, yeah, pl just playing... Link to the past on television again, but now with a smaller play area. With oh yeah, that's areas. much less interesting. Yeah, that it, it just didn't happen. So I, I mean, it would have the issue of the smaller play area, mm -hmm. which you know, for Link to the past, maybe it's not as big of a deal as some of these sixteen-bit kind of conversions. But yeah, it still would be something. What what the four swords part brings to the table, I'm not really sure in this format. I've played other four sword stuff, but obviously so, again, not this. Yeah, I mean, this is and so this is basically a combo cart of. Uh, if you're playing the single player, here's Link to the Past. If you have other players who have this and Link cables, uh, you can link up with with other players and like have its own bespoke multiplayer experience 
that is yeah. separate from Four Swords Adventures. So this, this was basically what the DSI was based on, right? It was oh yeah, yeah. Four Swords. The, game. Yes, the DSI version is an updated port of this Four Swords experience. Yeah, so I mean, I have I have some experience with it, but just not in its original form. Yes, obviously with DSI, you're, you're not relying on link cables and the screen exactly. there and stuff. So it's kind of a little bit unfair. Uh, it's not apples to apples kind of comparison, but I think um, overall, uh, probably, I mean, you got a great game. I do like the kind of competitive cooperative dynamic of, of four swords and stuff so i'll give it an eight even though if you're just thinking about it as a way to play link to the past it's not the best way okay warrior inc mega micro games yeah i didn't get a Mari uh, Mari warrior wear game until twisted oh but, um yeah which is oh very... you mean the one that never came out in europe yes oh yeah especially not yeah, it, uh yeah the the, the i was the whole i guess it was the whole eu that it didn't come out for but uh yeah it uh twisted i was a japanese cartridge that i ended up having but um yeah that that which reviewed super well and every you know, over time people seem to think twisted is still the best one so i kind of came to this after that and i guess maybe it isn't as kind of um fun in some ways but you know when you take it back to just you know this this be the first time that the concept yep existed and all that i think it deserves a lot of credit for that and it is executed pretty well even if maybe not like quite as fleshed out as it would be with twisted so i think um oh, it's probably like an eight and a half kind of thing for me but let's go with eight okay advanced wars 2 black hole rising so i played the first one i've not played this i have it on wii u virtual console but not put in a significant time. it's more and uh, the um, it will be incorporated into yep. the one plus two camp. reboot camp. <laughs> yeah, so it, I guess there's that, but yeah, that was you know again generally positive sort of reception, but much even more more of the same kind of what was the mm -hmm. you know kind of um, general sort of thrust of the coverage. So I, I wasn't compelled uh to to go and, and play it but uh i imagine you know it's it's pretty good so uh, i'll go with eight on that okay super mario advance 4 super mario brothers 3 no e-reader content yeah so this is interesting because the only way i've played it is through the wii u virtual console and uh that is, you know, with the benefit of some of the e-reader stuff, which is, is fun. That, like, you know, there's, there's some amusing uh, little things in there, you know, bringing stuff from other Mario games into the Super Mario Bros. 3 environments, like the vegetables from 2 yep. or the cake from Mario World and all that. So that is a shame. Although, of course, if you was to think about the wonderful thing about the Wii U Virtual Console version is it's just like it's all just there. Like, you know, someone has gone through the, the, the effort to scan these cards. If you actually had to do the... I've never done it, but from everything I've ever heard sounds like it was miserable. Like the e-reader sucked. Yeah. I mean, it just, like, scanning, goodness, like, many cards to get, like, Donkey Kong. For oh, yeah. Whatever. Like, it's... Go. It does. It does not sound like a lot. Of go to the that. store and buy a bu buy a blind bag that comes with five cards, three of which are patterns for Animal Crossing, <laughs> one of which is um is like some something for a Pokemon game. I forget. And then one of them is here is card six of eight for Donkey Kong. Six. <laughs> go pull. One, two, three, five, four, five, seven, and eight, and you can play Donkey Kong on the NES if you perfectly scan these barcodes and don't let and don't let the cards bend at all as they're going through. Don't you have to go at a very perfect pace. Yeah, it's it's one of these things. It does remind me of uh, the idea um, with the. Uh... Bangayo with the level sharing on DS, you know, we had the modem noises and you could kind of uh, 
you know, play the modem noises into your DS, and that's how it would load a level. Like it's a, uh, there's something amusing about like this this sort of like workaround or something you know, for delivering content in yeah and you know it's kind of before where we are today where these sorts of things are all just kind of uh standardized but you know in practice not that practical uh and and, and doesn't really lend itself to kind of uh, having a great deal of of time for but um still you know you have to say it's a little bit diminished for, for having no domestic access to that stuff oh yes um, in well. general you know it's a pretty solid kind of version and it doesn't suffer as much as some of these games in the loss of the play area because of course super mario brothers 3 left a lot of the play area uh, a lot of the screen display i should say not in the play area but with the kind of uh, hud uh, you know with the the run meter and all that kind of stuff and so what they do with super mario advance 4 is they overlap that information onto the play area yes so you know like it, it doesn't feel as cramped as some of the other games and it generally feels pretty good and it's still got, you know, even leaving the e-reader out of it, I think there's still, like, you know, kind of the unique Luigi gameplay. Uh, uh, perhaps I forget if that's if that's uh, walled off uh, to the, I, the extra stuff or not. I don't think it's walled off. Right. So, you know, that if you, if you got used to playing with Luigi in the other Mario Advance games and kind of wanted to keep doing that, he's, he's kind of hard mode in some ways mm -hmm. uh, because he's slippery and, and stuff. But... You know, he can jump really high. He can make some things easier. Maybe just like Luigi. <laughs> uh, but and it, yeah, there's the voice samples and stuff. It's it's generally a pretty damn good version of a classic. Uh, so um, and and of course, you know, compared to previous European releases, you haven't got any 50 hertz not, uh, shenanigans. Yes. So I think I'll go with an eight. Well, it's kind of an eight and a half, but we'll go eight. Okay. Pokemon Pinball, Ruby and Sapphire, which is beloved. I played this on Virtual Console. Again, like, I know like people really like the, the GBC one. or mm -hmm. well, well, the other was it GBC or the regular Game Boy? I forget. But um, that that's really loved, and uh, it hasn't been re-released. But this one, you know, I, pl I play quite a lot of this on Wii U, Virtual Console, actually, because I, again, really do like Pinball. Obviously, there is a bit of a disadvantage with this gba the resolution it had doesn't make it the most natural choice for like you know a expansive pinball table where you can see right. you know all the different shots at once and all that but it manages it relatively well and obviously it just like compensates by so much like just all the video game you know elements to it and specifically obviously the pokemon elements to it that take it you know that give you a different kind of experience than just like trying to recreate some actual table or something that could have been an actual table so you know, the, the the you know all the ways the different pokemon are worked in i can remember the kind of like boss fight type of like sub boards you know like rayquaza and all that like it was pretty cool i uh, uh, and that was years later so i think an eight for this one okay a lot of eights in a row Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. Yeah, I had this uh, at, you know, basically at launch, I think, because it reviewed super well. This was like a real darling of, of reviewers, as I recall. You know, a lot of people seem to really, really like it. And just the fact that it was kind of, you know, uh, something that was a, a bit of a return to Super Mario RPG in some ways, you know, but it's it his own thing and uh, you just you know, kind of incorporate in even more different sort of interactivity into the battles beyond just the kind of the time button press. Uh, you know, now you're kind of more actively dodging attacks with jumps and stuff as well as, you know, enhancing your attacks with the time button press and the overworld puzzles and the comedy and the, you know, fourful, everybody loved fourful. Uh, it just, yeah, totally blew up. And I really, really liked it uh, myself as well. Having, as we already discussed, the Nia Mr. Super Mario RPG, didn't play Paper Mario until after this. This was kind of my introduction. And yeah, I, I, I really 
did enjoy it um you know and it just uh the the way it uses all the characters like bowser and stuff uh you know that, that you know as well as a bunch of characters that you didn't know um it yeah, i think a nine for this okay top gear rally yeah so i mean it's, i guess it's is this something that they would have published uh, in america or? yes they did right okay I have no yeah, idea why no it's not it seems like it's something that makes more sense for the, the european sure does lust for right for driving racing games but um yeah i really don't know much about this although i suppose i mean the, the, you know, there's there's a certain amount of the, the top gear there's multiple of those games right uh but oh yes this is the only one that and that nintendo brought over that yeah that they published but yeah sad, sadly it's a, 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 if, if you're if you're over here and you hear top gear you mostly think of the television show of course uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh uh, yeah, it's uh, in terms of the the pedigree. Yeah, just trying to sort of get some sense of it. Uh, Chemco. Well, there you go. <laughs> I don't know what. Uh oh. I don't know what uh, you know that cut. How would they sort of? Because it was on N64, but how did they kind of translate it to the GBA? I'm not sure, but yeah, I think. Um, Maybe it's probably just gonna have to be a five. I think this one might be okay. might be being uh, a little bit harsh there, but well, we still have a whole game to go, and even with that game as a zero, we still have our highest score today, for an Ooh. average, um, for a year. So because everything has been your your two lowest scores have been fives, and there's just been tons and tons of sevens and eights across the board. Um, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, Square Enix playing nice again. Yeah, so, yeah, the, the, this is it. It is bearing fruit at this point. Um, you know, so it's... Uh, this is kind of the first... One of the first things in that. And I... I obviously, uh, it's kind of... I, I didn't end up getting around to this again. It, it just seemed like I probably wasn't... Um, well-trained enough in turn-based mm. sort of strategy games or RPGs that certainly to go sort of to what something that's kind of both uh, in a way. Uh, so it, it did seem a little bit intimidating. Um, and also there was a certain sort of refrain of like, you know, what did, this is good in, in a number of ways, but it's not the original Final Fantasy Tactics, mm -hmm. which um, is very well liked isn't it um yeah. in a lot of quarters so yeah that it didn't quite persuade me to uh to play i did end up having to review final fantasy tactics a2 for ds because john assigned it to me for some reason i uh i can only imagine you know i'm just lucky i guess that that was like a, not a big deal or whatever because i mean you know if, if you want to talk about somebody who doesn't particularly know the series having to review something I mean I spelled it out I was very upfront I was just like this review is coming from someone who is not familiar with yeah you know this series in particular or this sort of subgenre in general but good god I mean yeah if it, it was it was a lot it was a lot to to try and, and do but you know I did I, I did my best I quite like the game in general but it's just in terms of feeling like you've got the proper context to evaluate it fully it was a lot uh, and so yeah there's a certain irony in me sort of not getting this <laughs> you know, for some of those reasons yes. and, then, and then having to review it sequel years later but uh, uh, yeah not having the most to go on I think I'll probably give it a 7 okay wow 7.19 I wonder that might be the highest score anyone has given any year I think it's it's all about the GBA. It's just that you know the the GBA you know, brought over you know so many of these sorts of experiences that you know yeah. I, I, I was certainly you know excited to play, and I think also experiences that you know have held up 
somewhat better. Oh, for sure. A lot of games that... If you look at games at large that were coming out around this time, I think, you know, on consoles and stuff, a lot of them would not have held up as well. And if they were dominating this, like, selection here, it would probably be more, you know, that it would not be as high. But because it's the GBA games uh, in particular that, uh, you know, kind of are making up the bulk of the releases here. I mean, and, they, you know, and of course... Not that everything that NOE has chosen to bring out is is, is great. I think we've established that. Oh, <laughs> yes. But you know, a lot of the time when they are bringing stuff out, even if it's if it's something that's not theirs, there's some, you know, kind of reason, you know, for that. And I mean, like I, said, I, mean, but with the, I could have gone higher on the Top Gear because it's got like it had some pretty good reviews back in the day. But I yeah. Just, I don't want to go too high when I can't really back it up with uh, actually having played it. Do you want to poke into 2004? Well, yeah, we, we, can, we can have a look and just uh, sort of set the yeah. stage, I think. So it's uh, 37 games. Oh. <laughs> Get ready for what for modern Nintendo or like this era of Nintendo. Uh, Nintendo likes to, likes to do the thing where uh, they back, back up but guess what? They're done, because 2004 has 37 games. 2005 has 39 games. Oh. Uh-huh. Uh, 2007 has 41 games. 2008 yeah, I mean, has 34. That, I'm not surprised about 07, so much in terms of, you know, you think of... You know, Wii is is hitting its stride. DS is is firmly in its stride, and yeah, you know, like I said, also especially for for certain parts of Europe, especially like weird DS era is like when like Nintendo was like kind of the first time they were really really popular. You know what I mean? Like it's like yeah. Nintendo's relatively been, especially I guess outside more outside of the portable space. Um, you know, been sort of more of a niche thing in Europe, but that Wii DS era mm. is like, no, this is, you know, as as popular as any any console on the market. You know, uh, the, 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 that was not that's not really a very common thing in Europe is for for Nintendo to be in that position because it didn't really happen with NES and Super NES the way it did in Japan and America. So 2007, I get it. But yeah, 04, 05, I guess I wouldn't have necessarily thought. But you do, I've already seen all the, the NES anniversary stuff is is definitely a, 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 a playing a significant role, isn't uh -huh. it? You know, it's uh, <laughs> where it was like, okay, we've, we've got... And it was bigger in Japan, wasn't it? The Famicom yes. line was like really big. and Really they had, like, big. They had all the Famicom disc system sort yep. of ones with the, the special like packaging to... I mean, they all had like quite fancy packaging but the fds ones kind of stick out because obviously it's replicating that style and the, with the the color the cartridges and everything like yeah it was even more extravagant there but still a lot a lot of releases so when you think about it it makes sense but yeah that's that's a lot <laughs> um all right starting real quick kirby air ride never played it uh, never played it obviously a lot of what you hear about is is just fragments you know that the you know press the button to lose i think is what james always says about yes. this um but you know uh i can't really speak to its merits uh I, 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 other fragments include things like old oh, city trial is good i don't really know what city trial is but i have heard that it's good <laughs> Um, that some of the music is a lot of fun. Uh, it's, it's got into Smash Bros. Mm -hmm. as, you, as you predict, uh, expect. Um, but yeah, I really don't know like how to assess this at all. Yeah, if you if this is a probably because this is a hard one to describe. Yeah, because it's you know obviously it's it's is a, you know a racing game at its heart but it also you know it has like significant kirby mechanics like it's not just like a, a skin yes so whew, I'd, I'd probably give it a six but i i i yeah, really feel like i don't know what i'm doing with that all right animal crossing <laughs> yeah didn't play animal crossing until we 
so uh, myself so yeah i i didn't uh you know i came to it late a dev D ds was the one where i really strongly considered it uh you know because and it kind of was a good fit on that yep. uh but but for whatever reason i didn't quite get around to it and then when the, it was like oh but the wii one's coming out so i'll get that and then so that was my first one but um you know certainly i haven't played that and of course more recently on switch and everything um i i like animal crossing and i think the gamecube version had you know a lot of of you know the the the, the appeal in place already and of course mm -hmm. you had things like the the retro games in there i assume they were they just were they still in the european they were version? still in the european version they didn't, they didn't go cut on that well that's good um so yeah i'll give it an eight okay pokemon channel all right, so yeah, all I really know about this is I think James streamed it once, uh, and it looked sort of baffling and bad. So I think um, <laughs> I mean, what, how would you describe it? Okay, I mean this in not a negative way. Its target audience is kids that are not old enough to play a Pokemon game yet. Sure, is that this is largely a game where you and an in-game Pikachu watch TV. Uh, you decorate the room that the TV lives in. There's light adventure game segments where you leave the house where the TV is, which is, by the way, a very Japanese tatami mat, like, single, uh, single room home. And you uh, go explore the nearby area to collect trading cards not pokemon the trading card game but it's like trading cards of um of other pokemon in the environment um you like collecting trading cards is like the most game like thing in it there's a shopping channel where you buy decorations <laughs> there's a horoscope channel you can watch and you can watch a pokemon um short that is was created originally for the game that's maybe about six minutes long but they split it into 60 second chunks that you unlock throughout the game <laughs> um it, does, it sounds like a game from the the multimedia era <laughs> you know, something that would have been on mega cd or you know like that, that yeah that's, it's... it's it's weird and it's hard, genuinely it's very challenging to describe because, like, again, you and I are definitively not the target audience. Yeah, that's the it's like part. When people say, like, game for babies, that is usually exceptionally derogatory. But here it's like, no, this is like, what if I want to hand a kid that likes watching parts of the Pokemon show because they like the Pikachu's? Yeah, um, so it's sort of like mildly interactive audio visual experience. Like, uh, yep, yeah, that is that is what it is. Is it also yeah. launched? It also launched at like a big budget price. Like it was like yeah, well, I mean, you you would hope so, wouldn't you? But oh, yeah, yes, it's, I guess it's just a yeah, it's again the sort of product of the sort of full spectrum Pokemon era of just like oh like, yeah, a, 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 anything. That various types of experiences can be sort of greenlit here if, if there's a Pokemon angle to it. Uh, and it's, it's tough for, for anybody like me to actually assess this, uh, you know, on its own sort of aims, you know, like what it's actually going for. But I, I'll get, it'll have to be a four, I think. Okay. Mario Golf Toadstool Tour. Yeah, I had this, uh, you know, at the time at launch, basically as a sequel to the N64 game that I very much liked, and it's a you know, mostly very effective sequel. It looks quite a lot nicer, as you'd imagine. You know, it has these sort of equivalent connections to the GBA game, the way that the original had connections to the Game Boy Color game. Um, you know, the courses are... It's about, it's about the same number of courses, maybe some more characters, um, you know, but uh, it's not radically different or anything, just kind of polished up few mechanical changes like um 
I think there's like an additional layer of like, well, you can put top spin, but you can also put super top spin. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. It's like they do make a difference. I, I think there was um I'm not sure this was in the N64, but, but it was basically like what they call tournament greens, where it's like all the greens that run like faster and play a bit harder because like the putting in general wasn't that difficult. Like, so I guess it's like if you felt it was too easy, you could go with that. It's just more customizable, a few more sort of fanciful kind of Mario elements in some of the course design. So I think an eight is, is appropriate for this. Okay. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Yeah, never played this, and obviously it's a game that's famous for the amount of like hardware that uh, a lot along with some of these other. The and other... people had a really harsh awakening last year when they put out the HD remaster, and was like, "Was this game never good?" Yeah, yeah, that that seemed to land with a bit of a thud, didn't it? And I, I don't know personally, having not played it, how much of that was just you know like maybe they did kind of a shitty job of because surely the promise of a re-release of this game is oh like experience you know, that that the way it was sort of it made, but just in a more convenient way. Yeah, than, I mean, uh, so the the biggest fundamental complaint specific to that remaster is the netcode and, like, the way that the networking was set up. Um, but, like, also, it's Diablo. Right. Well, it's it's, it's not something that I was ever going to be in position oh, to yeah. uh, test out or, you know, be in the inclination to test out. So, um, you know, uh, I, I played Four Swords Adventures years later as a sort of single player experience essentially mm. um mm. Uh, and that was still quite fun but i don't think that would be the case with this which, uh, uh, it really doesn't sort of work in that way so uh let's go let's say hmm, it's a kind of a, a five and a half with this but maybe we've got six okay warrior inc mega party games yeah i played this a little bit again i didn't own it Played it a bit. Seemed like quite a lot of fun. Um, obviously, you know, WarioWare itself uh, is, is mostly just kind of brought over, I guess, but just into a party game context. Yep. Um, but it is quite fun in that way. It's got a pretty cool sort of energy to it. I think uh, seven. Okay. Uh, worth noting, this year, no Mario Party on GameCube. Well, 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 that's uh, they, they had to take the extra year to come up with the microphone. Is that yeah, right? no. exactly. I also don't think there's a Mario Party in Game Boy Advance. I think this is just no Mario Party in uh, Europe. Yeah. Well. Probably had to get all the EU regulations approved on the microphone. <laughs> um, Pac Man Versus. Yeah, the famous Pac Man Versus, yeah. Which was 2003 yeah. everywhere else. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, I'm not sure what the delay was there, but yeah, again, didn't get to experience it as an original content, so I did play it a little bit, just tested it out, really, because you could do, like, a kind of a download play version of this with the Namco Arcade collection yes. on Switch. Uh, you know, it does seem like, you know, a, quite a fun kind of concept, but obviously, again, just, you know, when it's that much kind of rigmarole it's just not going to happen uh, uh so uh i think six for you know kind of uh being sort of fundamentally kind of amusing ideas but just not very practical pokemon coliseum how much do you know about this one yeah again not having not been sort of you know into the pokemon ecosystem yet I, I did, you know, this was mm-hmm. too early for me to be playing these sorts of because but they did these sort of the stadium kind of series got progressively kind of more involved oh yeah this isn't this isn't stadium so um stadium is on n64 and then we it comes back with in the name of battle revolution yeah that's right yeah, but yeah, like Coliseum and its sequel, XD Gale of Darkness, are just full-on console RPGs. Right, yeah. I, I always remember, especially with the, the latter of the two, reading reviews that kind of say, you know, 
a lot of the time it would kind of be limit, like it's like oh this sort of walks up to the line of being like a real Pokemon game on GameCube, but it's not quite there. Like that was the sort of sentiment. yeah, because you're not going, you're like not going on the adventure and trying to complete the Pokedex. Um, you are gonna lose your mind if you don't know the premise of these games because <laughs> these are like, I and I want to give you um, just as a reminder. This is 2004. Pokemon is a little bit cemented in like its brand and it's it's nearing the end of like its first generation, but it's like crucially we haven't gotten to the point where like it's been around for 20 years we can fuck around a little bit. <laughs> this is a game where an evil organization has been torturing Pokemon into making them evil. <laughs> and you have a mechanism on your arm that lets you use Pokeballs that will actively steal other trainers' Pokemon. <laughs> so this is the game where you are a literal criminal and you are stealing people's Pokemon, except you're stealing the evil Pokemon so that you can teach them how to be good again. But, like... <laughs> That, like you could send them to the Wayne Foundation for Wayward Pokemon. Like, yes, you know, be reeducated. But like this Pokemon, like this game, also like opens with like, oh, your um your sidekick character. How do you meet her? She was kidnapped, stuffed into a bag, and thrown in the back of a truck. <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on in these games? Wow. It's uh yeah, I don't know whether it's like a case of them like deliberately trying to be edgy or just like trying to come up with something and it's accidentally oh, yep. kind of uh, yeah. And you have a like, motorcycle yeah. in the desert and you're wearing goggles. It's uh it's, it's this is interesting. I don't. I I have a feeling that it probably, if they ever do like GameCube games getting re-released, this probably won't be one of them. Sadly. I don't know. Yeah, it would be. So this was all, this was made by uh, Genius Sonority, and uh, yeah. not Game Freak. <laughs> very much not Game Freak. But yeah, well, they they were certainly very busy as they continue to be. But uh, yeah, I, yeah. I've, I've, oh, I've, I've and the the music is game. very good though. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, so it, it, like I said it's um, it just felt like the wrong kind of starting point. Yeah, I like reading about about these games and just thinking, yeah. well, you know, I I really need to play a real, you know, a, a, the mainline game before I kind of go elsewhere. But uh, no, I, I didn't. I don't know whether it was always a bit vague to me, especially because it had the name Coliseum. The of, first, it, it, it did kind of. Yeah, okay, that's not the best like, branding. It's like Stadium Plus. It has know, a Stadium it's... mode in it. Like there's like the yeah. there's the game, and then there's also optional eh, if if you want to just play battles. Um, but whereas like the Wii game is literally fuck, we need a Pokemon oh. game on Wii. How fast can we get one? Yeah, oh yeah, I, I remember that. I remember um, that. It's basically just yeah. The is that, to, yes, yeah, it's, it's except it doesn't awesome. have the mini games. <laughs> so it's even more barren than the S64 games. That Wii game is trash, and it was fifty bucks. Um, whereas, yeah, Pokemon Coliseum. Just, just for reference, like this is a game that I've been thinking of pitching as a retroactive for a couple of years now. Like, I like there's a lot of really interesting things and experiences in Coliseum and its sequel, uh, which is also on GameCube. Yeah, no, I, I probably remember the Gale of Darkness a little bit more just reading about it because I think the fact that it wasn't, you know, like it wasn't as it sort of the branding really, it was, it was, it was a Coliseum. Mm -hmm. Like it kind of made you think more that, and, and definitely the way it was covered was more like, oh, okay, you know, like a lot of it in terms of previews and the. the uh, re the, uh, the critical reception was how yeah. close is this to play in a Pokemon game on console? Like, and X, for, for... yeah, and XD is also weird because it introduced two Pokemon from Diamond and Pearl before Diamond and Pearl were announced. <laughs> um, Munchlax and Bonsley make their debut in the GameCube game XD Gale of Darkness, and you can transfer all your Pokemon from XD Gale of Darkness out to your GBA games, except for those two. <laughs> Because those two don't exist in the GBA games. It's weird. That's pretty good. 
Yeah, so obviously not a lot to go on, but uh, I think uh, perhaps a, a seven. Okay. Um, Pikmin 2. Yep, I had this. Uh, I've enjoyed the first one a lot. Got it basically at launch. I reviewed well, of course. I enjoyed it. And it does, you know, successfully kind of expand on the first game in most respects. I think uh, some of the things I like the most about it it's it sort of uh, is is the more unique kind of uh, creatures and enemies, essentially like bosses. So there's not really a lot of that in the first one. There's a lot of like unpleasant, scary things that will kill a lot of your Pikmin, but not quite the, the, to the same extent as as here. Like I think there's the kind of BD long legs thing uh, mm-hmm. in the forest naval or whatever the, or the underground bit, and then of course there's the emperor. The bold blacks is it or whatever you know the, in the lat in the final trial but not a lot with this, this brings more into it including the sort of sinister creature at the end that is either has kidnapped louis or is being controlled by louis i don't think they can they really quite make up their mind whether louis is they, they want you to be ambiguous about whether louis is like evil <laughs> mm-hmm. it's very strange but um you know it, they, they, i guess where it's a bit less successful is probably just like the kind of dungeon crawling stuff is I feel like there's a bit of bloat there. I kind of um, like the more the somewhat would have preferred a bit more of a compromise to be sort of focused a little more the way that um, Pikmin is you know, the original Pikmin that is because you know time stops down there and every it, it just it's I don't know it, it feels a bit just like it stops being Pikmin. At that point. Yes, and there's a lot of that. A lot of the game is that stuff, and it's visually kind of eh because it's a black void, um, you know. And it's just kind of like, it's an easy, relatively easy way to kind of expand the amount of stuff to do in the game, and and you know, uh, there's a lot of the expansion is is you know welcome, but not unambiguously so. So I think I would go with an eight for Pikmin Two as well. Okay. Um, last one before I have to go. Sure. Um, Donkey Konga, and this is closer to the US version, I believe. Yeah, there's definitely some differences, I think. Of, like, the Japanese version, you'd have, uh, you know, kind of like uh, Japanese TV show stuff. And, yep. And, you know, all this sort of. Whereas, like, America, obviously, like, more just kind of off brand <laughs> pop stuff. And, yeah, like uh, I, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this on RFL one, but but like in Donkey Konga Two, there is a cover version of "Losing My Religion" by REM. Originally, yes, uh, that is exclusive to the European version of Donkey Konga Two. Right? It's not present on. So there, there's something. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, I, mean, I mean, it was always bizarre. In addition to the very small guitar or whatever that's in the the video. Uh, it is also it was intended to be played with plastic bongos. I mean, that's just the yep. way that that song was written. But I mean, I've played a little bit of Donkey Kong again originally. The first time, I was when somebody you know had a bunch of multiplayer games and I tried it out and it seemed, you know, it seemed quite fun. Uh, I got bongos years later to play Jungle Beat, and I, I I've not played it very much because it's you know in front of the TV and I've got to get the bongos out and it's just really impractical. God knows what state those bongos are in by now. But uh, the um, Donkey Kong 3, the Japanese version, that has like uh, quite a lot of video game songs in it. Uh, I think like it's, I don't know, I forget what anniversary it was tying into, but like it's got uh, quite a lot of, because uh, there were only were two outside of Japan, weren't there? But there was a yes. third one in Japan. So I have that and I've played with it, but uh, not the most to go on with the first one. Um, but I think a six. Okay. Um, and with that, I will call it for now. We made some good progress into 2004. Yeah, they're almost done with the GameCube stuff. Almost. Um, introducing my new stream closing graphic that I <laughs> created as during this, which is <laughs> the... Uh, you win graphic uh, from DKC on the GBC. It's, uh, it all, it, I mean, I was talking about the fact that he looked <laughs> like he'd been taking too long of a soap. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's what's happening there. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's uh, taking a soak in the Game Boy Color, 
before jumping out of it, I guess. That is, I mean, that's tub time. Right there. That is tub uh, time. He's, uh, he's enjoyed himself a little bit too much. He's probably going to be a bit lightheaded when he gets out. Yeah. For, you know, I don't see a Vita it must be under the water. For as long as it's lasted, he's, he's enjoyed it, clearly. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. And enjoy Thanksgiving. To Thank you. you. And, and everyone who celebrates. Uh...